week that's going to be raring to play. We got a lot of guys that's got to get healthy. Now you get tomorrow off because we're going to work all day Monday. Now if you hurt, get healthy because we're going to need you. We got a long stretch going. We got eight games in a row now. We take we took care of the first. One. Good job, good job, of all of you. Most everybody played, had an opportunity. That usually doesn't happen in college football, but it's good to see everybody out there trying and giving their best. Some guys made plays. It was just a fun night. There's a great crowd out there, guys. First game, all that orange in the stands, they were here for you. They're here to see you play. And welcome to the Auburn Football Review. We're in an empty Auburn dressing room right now. It was pretty exciting here uh, just a few minutes ago. And I would guess the, uh, the old coach is kind of pleased about the way things went. Well, we couldn't have scripted it any better. Uh, Phil, we, we needed a game like this. We needed to, to get some young players' uh, feet wet, so to speak. We played a lot of guys. Uh, we played, uh, I don't know, 50, 60 players, and it was a fun day. We had a great crowd, uh, a lot of orange in the stands, and I want to appreciate everybody for, for coming out and supporting this team. I know it wasn't a, a name team that we played, but Ball State played hard. We just overwhelmed them with speed, and uh, we've got a long ways to go to be a good football team, but we made some improvement today. Indeed you did. Let's go in the Auburn dressing room now and talk to some of those uh, young Auburn players. Well, you got it by yesterday. Wasn't bad either. You know, I come into this one, you know, I was really thinking about the game a lot before before we got here. You know, guys were telling me, you know, they were behind me no matter what. You know, I just began to feel more comfortable once we got closer to the game. And you know, I just wanted to go out there and just try to do the best I possibly could. You know, I just thank everybody for coming out. We had a big crowd out there today. Everybody was wearing a lot of orange. You know, we appreciate them coming out supporting us. You know, it's a great team effort today, and, you know, we just got to work on a couple things, and I think we'll get better each week. I feel good about the first game, you know, getting out there, getting the, getting the feel of things. But next week, I know we got to play much better. Tell me about the TD run. Uh, it's, it came, I mean, the line, they blocked real good. I, I'm just, I, I get them all the props for all my yards that I got, and uh, I can't say enough about the offensive line, the way they block. We came out, we did what we had to do, and everybody, offense, defense, played. We got a lot of players in the game and got some game experience, and, you know, overall, we did well. For me, personally, you know, I didn't hit my punts as well as I like to. My average is all right, but I still, you know, I need to still go back Monday and tomorrow, whenever we're practicing, to start working on, you know, try and improve it for next week. Yeah, when out at midfield, you hung one up real good. That, that yeah, right. Yeah, you know, that was the biggest thing that I had had problems with. You know, they asked me what was the main thing I was trying to work on, and that was my hang middles, because I was putting a lot of balls in the end zone last year. And so we worked harder on this summer, and fortunately, we got the chance, and I did what I needed to do. You obviously enjoy playing uh, defense because you went on about three tackles when you got in the game. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, it's, it's, it's a lot more physical on that side of the ball for us. A lot of contact going on, but... I like to play both sides. I mean, I just when I get in on defense, I just give it my best. All right, give me a report card. First, zero points. That's not bad. Uh, I give us about I give us about a B on physical. I give us A on the win. What you give us, DT? The same thing. I mean, we still got a long way to go. I mean, we still got to work on our mistakes and keys and how to fit the blocks and everything. So. But I, I didn't see any misalignment problems today. No, we didn't, we didn't have, that, I don't think we had any misalignment problems I, at all. I don't, I know when I was in there, I don't recall, I mean, I mean, we just got better over the summer and just learned the defense better. Because we really got us prepared for the game. Oh, I think it went um, rather well. Um, we went out there, we got us a shutout this game. It's a good stepping point. And, you know, we got to go out there and work a little hard, and we got to get ready for Ole Miss, who's coming in next Saturday. This is Auburn, of course, won the game 30 to nothing, and... Uh, that's what you wanted. You wanted the defense to control the game so your young offense uh, could feel its way and get some confidence. Well, and, and it, that's exactly what happened. We, we controlled the line of scrimmage really on both sides of the ball field. It was uh, one of those where we overwhelmed our offensive line. Our defensive line played awfully well. Our front seven really ran to the ball. And we do have a lot of speed. And, and of course, we played a lot of players on the defensive line. That's unusual uh, to have that much depth. Uh, if we can keep them healthy, we'll continue to get better. But we needed a lot of possessions as we can see going into these highlights, that we needed a lot of possessions for a young offense to, to overcome some mistakes. And let's take a look at that first half action. A big crowd, and they love that eagle, Coach. Very big crowd. Look, a lot of orange. Uh, here's a couple of groups that we honored at the beginning of the game. I think the 81 and the 51 teams. There's Coach Dye. He's excited. Uh, I tell you what, he's been a big part of our, our success since we've been here. Brandon Johnson on his first carry of the year. I tell you, he's going to have a... Good season for us, I can feel it. And Third one it. there, sneaking for the first. Jason Campbell on the sneak, 6'6", uh, six, six body, pretty good on getting a few yards for quarterback sneak. Uh, there's a good start by Ronnie Brown. 
third carry for him for a touchdown run outruns his shoes. His first touchdown of his career. Hope there'll be many more. Uh, I think there's going to be many. A good crowd of students there. Need to wear a little bit more orange in the student section. Here's uh, Don Terry's Thomas on a blitz. Forces a quick throw. One of their ten punts. And Joe Walkins. Uh, this is the first uh, look at little Joe Walkins. He got the game ball for from, this. From uh, Dillard High School in Fort Lauderdale. Uh, the big key to this is making the first man miss, and he can surely do that. He's got good speed and refuses to run out of bounds, which is also a good trait of a good returner. First and 10 at the 38. Watch this. Here's Ronnie Brown on what we call truck. Goes over the top. Bruised his shoulder right there a little bit, uh, but he's fine. Going to be able to come back. We held him out most of the rest of the game. Here's Cassinius Moore. First carry uh, from Anniston, uh, Alabama. And one of Damon Duvall's uh, three field goals of the game. And a 10 nothing Auburn lead. One of the young Auburn fans in the stand, she's ready to go. Here's an option play, one of the first options that we've seen of the year. We'll see quite a bit. Looks like a lot of teams in our conference are going the option play and played very well by Stanford Simmons. James Collier on the pressure and Chad Gilliard on the pass coverage there. Uh, this little quarterback, very nifty in the pocket. You can tell, tries to get around, get out. Alton Moore on the sack. He'll get a lot of sack this year. I tell you, he's really improved from last year season. Here's Jason Campbell, of course, on the scramble. And we've talked about Jason's mobility, and he's going to give us this. He's going to force people to stay in the in their passing lane. And that starts the best drive of the game for Auburn. Here's a quick pass to Ronnie Brown. Jason on a little touch pass. You can tell uh, good pass protection. Kendall Simmons uh, helmet comes off there. Good pass pro for the offensive line. Tim Carter on the reception. Down at the 17 now. Look at the blocks out front. Blocked by Mike Vassello. Brandon Johnson, we needed that to keep the drive alive. At the first and goal at the seven. Brandon on a little inside belly play, and then the quarterback sneak by Jason Campbell. Good movement up front by Vassell and Hart McGarry and Ben Nyland on the quarterback sneak for the touchdown. 86 yards on that drive. That had to make you feel good with your young quarterback. It really did, and then, of course, the defense coming back, getting us the ball back was really a, uh, a plus uh, for the offense. We had so many possessions. Here, Joe Walkins, uh, he runs a qu clock quite a bit. He's going he's gonna to be a <laughs> possession man on these punt returns. He refuses to run out of bounds, and I tell you what, we, we keep getting better at this. We'll, we'll get a couple back for touchdowns. Here's Jason in the pocket. Good to see him look at two or three different receivers, throwing at Cardinal Williams for his first time to touch the ball as a pass receiver, as a running back. Late in the half, this is the two-minute drill. This is the fourth and eight. And throw the ball over the middle to Robert Johnson, a great Great throw, good pass protection, and and uh, good execution. Good run by Robert. He's hopefully hopefully over his injuries and gets stronger as the year goes on. Let's see it again. As you can see, good pass protection. Got all day. Monrico Crittington there on outside, forcing the tackle on the outside release. Good catch. Make the first man miss. That's a big key for a receiver. Make the first guy miss. Break the tackle. Make You make the call on being out of bounds. I, I thought it was a good call by the official. Stretches. His six foot five frame in the end zone for the touchdown. Started with a minute 38 left in the half, and they get it in in uh, just about uh, four plays. So that's uh, that's good for your two minute drill, coach. We'll be back in just a minute. Very pleased with the the crowd, the enthusiasm. I mean, this is not an SEC team, but uh, it was all there. Tremendous tiger walk and a lot of orange. People fired up. I think people were anxious to see this young football team. They, I've, I've been talking about being patient, coming out and supporting this team, and there's not a better group of fans and the Auburn fans. One of the things you did over the summer was uh, your your Auburn fantasy camp again where you bring in people who just want to get the feel of being a player for a while. <laughs> Maybe turn back the years. How did that go? Well, we, we have a fantasy camp for, for any age person. We have them from, I guess, from 25 to 85 and we had almost 50 uh, young men, so to speak, come in this year and uh, <laughs> we practiced and uh, we kind of show them what we do inside uh, a coaching office, so to speak, all the recruiting and the game planning, things like that. But uh, it's fun, and uh, they, get a, they get a kick out of it. Let's see for some video of that. Opening the second half, you've had to feel good, the 24 nothing lead, and it gives you a chance to play some people. Uh, play, play a lot of people and, and, and also go out and work on some things that we need to work on. Jason needed to stay in another quarter, and we did that. And, uh, we wanted to work with some young defensive backs and also continue to work on our kicking game, and that's just exactly what happened. 
Second half now, they uh, did not dent the Auburn territory in the first half, and I don't think it's going to happen this, this half either, Coach. And they're punting after making one first down. Joe Walkins, uh, familiar sight. Again, he's going to be exciting to watch. Just keep your eye on him. You got to tuck that ball in a little bit tighter. We don't need to turn it over on special teams. Also got a little bit uh, excited there. Good throwing and catch there to DeAndre Green. Third down play, but uh, Auburn has to punt it away. Fans are excited. Wearing their orange. Wear your orange again this week. And uh, here's a little screen pass they throw outside. Mayo Sal on, on, a, on the coverage. He's going to be a good player for us here at Auburn. Quarterback is running for his life most of the night. That really will help pass coverage. On Swing side. pass to Carnell Williams. Good blocking by Mike Pacello and Hart McGarry. Uh, Carnell got welcomed to college football <laughs> on a couple of licks. Yes. Here's a little quick pass over the middle to Robert Johnson. Pass protection was excellent. Uh, a couple of times we got pretty good pressure, but uh, overall, uh, it was it was good. But here's something that's going to help us. We put in a couple of screen plays this year. Here's Asenius Moore on the double screen pass and uh, worked pretty well for us for the first night and and uh, the second of uh, Damon's field goals. 35 yarder there. Dodged the rain a little bit. Got got through a little bit early and dodged the rain. Here's good pressure and on the what we call a waggle pass by Alton Moore on the sack. Third and long. Here they come again. Third and long. Alton Moore. Knocking the ball down again. Uh, had a good game. Oh, yeah. Good really game. improved from his uh, first year. Of course, junior college players, uh, you know, it takes a while to get going, and he's really learned our defenses. Here's a good good setup by, by Jason Campbell. Good pass protection and catch by Joe Walkins. First and 20 uh, after a penalty here. High snap. Danny Lindsay played center uh, second half for us. A true freshman. Throw to De uh, DeAndre Green, but uh, Danny Lin Lindsay's going to be good. He just needs to learn to bring those uh, snaps down a little bit on the shotgun. Fourth quarter now, and you got a field goal block. Now they've got the ball. Field goal block, one of the disappointments in special teams. We've got to work on that, but again, our defense takes over. You can just tell how much push we're getting up front. Here's a play-action pass. Uh, Dante Booker, uh, who joined the team three weeks ago, uh, going to be a really a big asset to this football team, uh, especially with depth. Here's Cause Fumble. Uh, Brandon Johnson uh, getting on the fumble recovery. We're going to have to research and find out when uh, Auburn's last two-way player <laughs> played. Well, he's going he's gonna to be, <laughs> be an asset to our defense and offense. Here's a throw over the middle. Uh, Daniel Cobb. Damon's going to have a good year. I tell you, he's building on his confidence. Good snap by Jeremy Wells and Justin Fesco on the hold. Uh, we work real hard on teams. His name quite a bit over the next next three or four years. Carlos Dansby from Woodline in Birmingham. What a what a tackle there. And there's old Brandon Johnson showing up again. I tell you what, he's he's gonna get his get his work in. Guy. Here's a screen pass. Here's where Carnell Williams hurts his ankle, twisted there a little bit, and hopefully we get him back soon. And then here's uh, Jay Ratliff. First catch is an Auburn Tiger, big tight end. He's gonna be a big asset for us. And well, what a this was a great opening game for the Auburn Tigers. And a big win for the Tigers, uh, cruising 30 to nothing over Ball State. We'll be back in a moment.
This one is going to be 51. right at 51, 51 and a half yards. Tesco will hold. Heels at the 41 yard line. Snap a little low. He puts it down. King is high. It's long. It is good by Duvall. 51 yards for Damon Duvall. And Auburn's lead is 30 to nothing with 9-12. Welcome back to the Auburn Football Review. The Rebels of Ole Miss come in next Saturday, and uh, I see the coach is already wearing that Ole Miss pin. Eli Manning, and uh, he's a good one. I saw him play in high school, and he's got great genes, and uh, Archie's done a good job with him, and uh, he's grown up. He's gotten bigger and faster and stronger and got some good receivers. So it'll be a tough game for us. They come in town, our first SEC game. They have a lot of young players. We have a lot of young players. Uh, should be a good one. See you next week at Jordan-Hare. Thank you for joining us here on the Auburn Football Review. This has been the Auburn Football Review, brought to you by Blue Cross and Blue Both ends split away. Offset eye in the backfield. He'll retreat. He'll hand it off to Cassinius Moore. Cuts it outside. 35-30, 25-20. He's at the 15, the 10. And this near side at the 5. He's in. Touchdown, Auburn! Hey, baby. Way to battle. Okay. <laughs> All right, guys. Great game. Great game. I, I know we made a little bit tighter than what it should have been. The best team won the game. We played hard. We gave them some, some opportunities the second half. But when you hold your back to the wall like that and you keep persevering, good things will happen. We grew up some then. Our offense grew up. They had to come out and make a first down. At least one. We made one. But we still got a long ways to go. But they're nothing sweet like that, guys. I tell you, SEC win first time. We got a 10-game home winning streak. We got to keep it going. Yeah. Both sides of the ball played good. Kicking game was good. We controlled the line of scrimmage, and that's how you win most of your games. But we got to play four quarters from now. On. They get tougher. You know what I'm talking about? They get tougher. So get ready. Let's enjoy this victory. I'm proud of every one of you. All right, James Cayer. Check it out. Office line did a great job, but little guys running behind y'all. Cause this morning, I'm a 22, three touchdowns over 50 yards. Where you at? Auburn Football Review, Auburn 27, the Ole Miss Rebels 21. Man, this place was rocking, Coach. And for three quarters, we looked pretty good. I don't know what happened in the fourth quarter. We kind of let the air out of it, but it was a great win and a great crowd, record crowd. The fans got into it. Uh, the players responded, and uh, what, what a great day and what a great start for the SEC. You matched two of the high-profile quarterbacks in this league, and uh, you still like yours. And young quarterbacks. Yes. I tell you, two young quarterbacks that... Uh, uh, withstood the pressure. Uh, both of them played well. I thought Eli really played well the fourth quarter, but I like Jason. Jason uh, made some big plays for us, throwing the ball, scrambling, making plays, making first downs. Uh, didn't make a, a, a just a real bad mistake other than throwing one interception, but it was a good throw. They made a great play, but two good young football teams that are going to battle for the next few years. Let's go to the Auburn dressing room. You know, I thought we played pretty good for our first SEC game of the year. Had a lot of young guys. We all stepped up today. Uh, I like to thank the offensive line for blocking the way they did. And uh, one for them, we I just I just love that line. They they blocked real good today. Came out great intensity. Um, reading well, knew with some of the things he was doing, picking up on the calls. We just had great intensity, and great fire. To, you know. What happened in, uh, in the late the third and the fourth quarter? I think they just started finding holes in our defense. We started throwing to them. They ran those running like, like a lot of the same routes, like little five, ten yard outs. And they kept going to it. We were just trying to, trying to hold them, trying to get out the game. We are going to hope, you know, be thankful that we got the win. Kind of got a little too relaxed, and uh, we started letting them drive on us, and uh, we had to step it back up and make a few more plays. This team is uh, starting to show some uh, some real balance. Uh, your young quarterback came out and played really well today. This is He's, he's coming, isn't he? Yeah, he really is. You know, he showed a lot of boys back in the pocket, making key throws and times under the pressure and stuff like that. So, you know, I thought he did a real good job. You know, offensive line, we try to do what we can, you know, to keep him off. But You're back in the jungle here at Jordan-Hare Stadium. 86,063 today. It was a warm jungle at 2.30, Coach. Very warm, humid. Uh, I'm sure the fans suffered a little bit, but the, the players really got hot. Everybody was soaking wet. The ball was slippery. and. It was a very good, uh, especially first half for, for, for the Auburn Tigers. 
and let's uh, take a look at that first half. Largest crowd ever to see a football game in the state of Alabama, and uh, a good portion of them were out there at Tiger Walk, too. You know, and probably the most orange ever worn in, in, a, in a stadium in the history. It was a great game, great atmosphere. Our fans were ready to ready to get it going. Students were there early. That's the sign of a big football game. And there's Coach Cutcliffe and myself before three games. We got a new smoke machine for this game. I think it works a little bit better. <laughs> you can tell that our fans are ready, and that's our student section. Our cheerleaders do an outstanding job along with the band. And here we go. 14-play drive here. It just didn't end right. Good throw and catch to DeAndre Green. Had a, had a great game for us. And that was a good drive. We, we were going against the wind, and uh, Jason feels real comfortable back there in the shotgun. Uh, there's Robert Johnson. Good protection. I thought our offensive line controlled the line uh, for three quarters, and uh, it, it was just good to watch. There's a, another throw and catch to Joe Walkins. Good protection by Hart McGarry and Mike Vassello and Ben Nyland in the center. Here's a fade route. Uh, we threw it against the wrong guy. I, I recruited Seneca Taylor there, probably one of the best defensive backs yeah. ever to play at Ole Miss. And I tell you, he's a, he's a good football player, and I'm glad to see him gone. That's this, he's a senior. Here's second and short at the 28th for them. They could not run the football, Coach, and it's hard to win when you can't well, run Yeah, the when, you, when you don't rush the ball more than 50 yards, you're going to have a tough time. You can't rely just throwing the ball. And, you can tell we got four or five guys on each play, and we, we dominated their, their offensive linemen early, and I think that was a big key to getting good field position. Third and long pass is no good here, and uh, uh, well short of the first down, and so Auburn will have to punt it out. Another throw to DeAndre Green. Again, you can just see Jason getting more comfortable in the pocket. Here's a big, big punt. Uh, we call it hang middle, and it means we're trying to keep them inside the 10-yard line to, to Boris. Uh, Robinson on the coverage and just a great play and this really got us going. We, we got them in there tight and we held them. You have to hold them three and out whenever you hold them and get them inside the 10-yard line. And good defense right there by Alton Moore. So they're backed up and trying to get off the goal line and not going to be able to do it. Here's a third and seven. Great defensive play here. Tried to fool us with a bootleg pass and good pressure by James Callier and Roger Cood on the, on the tackle. And, uh, now we made them punt. Uh, we called a timeout there with eight seconds to go to make them punt into the wind, and uh, the strategy worked. They punted, the kid shanked it, and About a 13-yard punt here. Yeah, 13-yard punt. And, uh, again, we don't get the touchdown out of this, but we, we keep them in the hole, we control the ball, and we put pressure on their defense. And they were their defense was out there 42 plays the first half, and that's, that's tough to play that much defense. There's Joe Walkins. Got to learn to catch the ball before you run with it. And, Causes a field goal, and Damon Duvall kicks it and gets it inside the right upright. So it's 3-0 Auburn early in the second quarter. We're feeling pretty good after the first quarter. We we held the ball, I guess, about 10 minutes the first quarter. and uh, Good pressure, again, making them throw the ball. And there's an interesting play. Uh, uh, we almost intercept it. They catch it, and then he fumbles the ball, and, and we get it in a big play. I think DeMarco McNeil gets that recovered. And Travaris Robinson caused it. Big play out of the defense again. Good field position, and we've got to make something happen. We we can't falter like this in in the stretch here. Or we get a good outside run there. They get a penalty for a late hit. Third and five. This is what uh, Jason Campbell's going to give us in the big games coming up. He scrambles. We're going they're going to have to put more pressure on him up the middle. And, uh, three three running plays doesn't get it. So yeah, we balls. didn't do a good job of calling plays there inside the five, and we didn't give ourselves a chance for the field touchdown. Got the field goal, but. Uh, feeling pretty good about what we're doing. Third and short there, and they stop it. Third and short, great defense. Uh, again, we, we got stronger. They they didn't cross the 50 the first half. Made them punt, and here's a big play by Joe Walkins. Doesn't look like much, but he doesn't let the ball hit the ground. That's right. It gets up field safe 30 yards. Or so. Yeah, that's that's right. And he's learning. And again, he scares me a little bit on catching those things. Catch him with his pads instead of his hands, but he's getting more confidence. Here's Jason in the pocket. Good throw and catch to Joe Walkins. That's great protection out of, out of Kendall Simmons and and the Monrico Crittington are tackles, but they force us to punt, and again, this this is good coverage. I think this is the fumble. Yes. Good special teams. Brandon, Brandon Johnson on, on, the, on the hit there, and I tell you, uh, our special teams are going to make teams pay this year when they try to return kicks and punts. We, we've got an excellent special teams coach, but Eddie Grant does a super job. And Here's a quick pass to Tim Carter, and that's what speed can do for you right there, just accelerate down the field face mask but apparently not here comes the touchdown touchdown good blocking and we're going to see a replay here by the offensive line we're starting to control the offensive line this is what we call the inside zone he reads the block of mike Pacello, cuts back good block there uh, initial block by monrico crittington and, and we walk in the end zone and that's going to happen more and more as we 
as these young backs begin to read the defenses and read the holes. 13 nothing at the half, and uh, Ole Miss has not crossed Auburn territory. This week, we salute linebacker to various pounds, who as a graduate student this fall is carrying a 4-0 grade point average. Congratulations to Tavarius Pounds, our Academic Player of the Week. We're back for the second half, and you have to feel very good. They haven't uh, dented uh, Auburn territory yet, as I recall. We just dominated the first half, especially on defense, and we could have scored some more points. Our, our special teams were excellent. We caused some turnovers, but I told the players at halftime it was going to be like playing with a 60-pound uh, uh, sack on their back the second half because of the weather, the intensity, you know, and how hot it was going to be. So we, we geared for that, and I thought we played good the, most of the third quarter, and then looks like we, we let our guard down a little bit. But uh, we, uh, you know, we got that big play at the beginning of the second half that really set the tempo. Let's get into the third quarter action. Strange and wondrous things happen in the jungle, Coach. Watch this play. Well, <laughs> we talked at halftime about making something happen on their first drive. They got the ball the second half. We made a big play. Don Terrace Thomas almost makes a fatal mistake instead of falling on it. He tries to pick it up, but great play by Spencer Johnson causing the fumble. Field position turns. Uh, we get a penalty because of a holding call. Backs us up, but uh, we continue to run it right. Look at the Second surge nine. of the offensive line. Uh, great block on the left side by Kendall Simmons. Uh, Ronnie Brown down to the two. Sets the stage for Cassinius over the top. Just super movement. Ben Nyland standing in the end zone after he knocks his guy back. So we got a pretty good handle of the game as we go here. Third and seven. Third and seven. Uh, look at that hit right there by Mark Brown. Mark Brown, Tavares Robinson, Roderick Hood, James Cowyer. They punt De it. Defenses is just controlling the game. Here's a third and three at the 31 of Auburn. Third and three. Uh, short motion by Tim Carter. Uh, what you can tell here is just great read right here by, by uh, Jason Campbell. Uh, they drop their coverage off with a short pass to Tim Carter. Turns into, what, a 20-yard uh, play. But here's a big mistake. Uh, we throw uncovered to... Uh, DeAndre Green and they make a great great play there and cause us a turnover but you know they don't get any points out of this and I think again that's the that's goes the, deep. the defense goes deep our defensive back fell down but he's standing out of bounds when he catches a ball uh, but again this is the first time that they'd been in any team had been on our side of the 50 pressure season good good pressure right there by our front line and Stanford Simmons on the interception and again our defense continues to make big plays Here's an, another indication of the ability of Jason Campbell to make a play. Make a play, but run out of bounds. Uh, he's going <laughs> to get enough opportunities to run the ball. You gotta, he made that defensive back pay right there, but down the line, it's going to get a little tougher. But this is the, probably the play of the game and great blocking on the outside. Cassinius Moore running in for the touchdown is kind of the backbreaker. We, we start to make it interesting here, but again, 27-point lead with a quarter to go is pretty tough to overcome. There it's a 20 after the kickoff. Counter play back inside. Reggie Torbor on the uh, initial contact. Our ends are continuing to play better. Uh, we allow him to throw the ball down the field. Good coverage by Carlos Rogers. He needs to play a little bit more inside to take away that post route. We'll work on that this week. They make a couple of big plays and get it down on the goal line, and there's the first score against Auburn this year. First score and uh, running play, and a little discouraging here. They get the ball back. They throw a quick pass, and terrible mistake out of Carlos Rogers but again that's fine we make a mistake but we can't miss those tackles and uh, we'll take them give them the ball the 20 yard line see if they can score but uh, quick plays got us in trouble fourth quarter now and they're back in the game 27 14 27 14 and here we run a bootleg pass this is the this is what I love to see out of Jason he just sets back in the pocket he reads the coverage that was a pretty good throw and catch right there for a corner out to Tim Carter There's another third and long out at the 36 Third and long, throw the ball downfield. Uh, DeAndre Green. DeAndre Green is a guy that loves the ball in tough situations. That was one of the biggest plays. Give us a first down, got us out of the hole, and gave them tough field position. Okay, now <clears throat> the drive stalls, and here Ole Miss goes. They're going to score here, but they're going to use six minutes off the clock. We, we, we made them use the clock. You know, we, we knew that we still had a two-touchdown lead, and uh, they had to convert two fourth downs. There we intercept. They call us for holding at the line of scrimmage and uh, just one of those things we've got to learn from. Uh, it, it, sometimes you, you, you need something like that to happen to learn from your bad situations, but uh, we gave them too many opportunities. Here's a good good play uh, by uh, Junior Rosegreen, young true freshman. 
Another fourth down play, and they get a pass interference penalty and then run it in the end zone. Run it in, and our defense looks like they're getting tired. As I told them, that, that Bears going to get on their back in the fourth quarter. It was a long game. It's very hot and humid. But we come back and we make a first down and basically put the ball game away. That was a big one right there. Big, big play. Gave us a first down. We end up having to punt on fourth and real short. They send the house. They tried to block it. There was their only chance, and they roughed Damon. And again, good coverage right there. They would have gotten the ball to, to a three-yard line. Well, anyway. It was only about a half a minute. Half a minute. Ball game's over. And Ole Miss played hard, uh, but again, it was a home game and first SEC win. Auburn wins 27-21. Back to talk about LSU in just a moment. The following is an Auburn Network production. Again, no huddle. Carnell Williams is the setback, and Williams will take the handoff. And he'll cut to the left side. Got some room. 5, 10, 15 yards. He'll go. 20, 15, 10, 5, gone. Touchdown, Auburn. 51 yards. Carnell Williams. Big hole off the left side. Wind at his back. He has kicked one 51 yards already this year. Here's the snap. Spot is down. Kick is up. Plenty long, plenty high. It is good! Damon Duvall splits the uprights from 49 yards away. And Auburn takes a 24-21 lead with 2.58 to go. I see a lot of long faces. Never take winning lightly, guys. It's tough to win. Never take it lightly. Put a smile on your face. Put a smile on your face. And let's go home and understand the problems that we had and go from here. It's a lot easier when you win and don't play very good than you lose and don't play very good like we did last week. Put a smile on your face. Let's go back to work. Welcome. The lights are dim here at uh, Vanderbilt Stadium, but uh, Coach, that arena out there is really torn up. This was one great football game. It was a good football game, and uh, it went back and forth. We had a great crowd. We had probably half the fans here. I, I really want to thank the Auburn people for coming out. We, we needed this. Uh, this young football team fought hard. We didn't play well. Made a lot of mistakes, but uh, we'll take a road victory in the conference any day. Okay, and we will go now to the Auburn dressing room and talk with a few of those players who played a great role in this great win. It's a big win for us. We knew coming in here that they play teams tough at home and you know that was going to be a close game and we were going to have to play four quarters and you know we still made a lot of mistakes offense, defense, special teams but you know it, it's a big win anytime you can go on the road and win especially against a team like Vanderbilt. They really tested you didn't they? Oh yeah Vanderbilt came out they really to be honest with you they gave us more than we expected so no. Congratulations to them, and they're going to be better this year. We got to get better from this experience. Tell me about the interception. Uh, that was a big play for us. Um, I see that was a real big play. I thought we were going to put more points up than we did, but um, watching film and the coverage that Coach put us in, you know what I'm saying? The position he put us in, he put us in a position to make plays. So he happened to throw it up, and I seen it, and I made a move on it. And things happened. And you wanted to score, right? Yeah, I wanted to score, man, but um, <laughs> I tried to jump, but he grabbed me when I was in the house, so. I try to stretch the ball as far as I could. You came out the first half, a little down, you know, when moving around, wasn't getting the tempo. You know, Coach Tubb came in second half and told us, you know, we have to step it up. We want to win. And this was a very important game. We knew we had to win this one. So second half showed what kind of team our heart got, what kind of heart our team got. I think this will help us on down the road. You know, we learned from this game, you know, knowing that we didn't play our best, but we still won. So we know we got a chance to be a good team. We just got to improve every week. Uh, we came together at a time that we really needed it most, and I'm very proud of my teammates. It's, very, uh, it's a big honor to be a part of Auburn. Lou Thomas gave you a lot of trouble. That, that gave him balance, throwing and running. That's yeah. a little water bug. Well, you know, they, 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 they played what they could. You know, when, when things open up on defense, you have to export it. I think they did a good job of that. Uh, but like I said, we were poor as confidence. It wasn't the first time that we were behind, you know, behind and we, we just rallied together as one. But um, he, did, he did a good job of reading the holes, but uh, we'll make sure we get that cleared up when we get back. Looked like you all were much better at getting lined up this week, even with their no huddle. Well, we worked hard on it. Uh, shoot, Sunday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I mean, day after day, they kept, you know, making sure that we not only, you know, got lined up, but ran to the football, ran to the football. And I think when you practice, you know, the way we did, um, the win is evident. You know, you're able to get the win because you know that you worked hard during the week. It's 
stadium. Though. Yeah, it was a great crowd, and uh, uh, it was a lively crowd and beautiful day. A uh, little slight breeze and a great day for college football. Okay, and Auburn begins very quickly. Another great on-the-road Tiger Walk, Coach. Well, what a faithful crowd. We gave them something to, to stand up for. A uh, bunch of young guys played hard the entire four quarters, but we couldn't have done it without all these people in orange. They, uh, they said it was 39,000 folks there, and I would guess at least 20 of them had on orange. At, at least half, and they were there early and stayed late. We do appreciate all of them coming out, but good football weather. Here we start out with, uh, with, the, with the opening kickoff. Jason takes a third and 14 and runs it about, I guess, about 30 yards, and I tell you, you play man coverage against him very often. He's going to do this to you quite a bit. 34-yard play. Here comes the uh, touchdown now. Carnell Williams, uh, this is a defense they ran about twice. They didn't run it the rest of the game. Uh, Carnell just broke a great block by Kendall Simmons downfield, and uh, that's not the last time you're going to see number 24 do that in his career at Auburn. He's going to get better and better. He's getting he's getting healthy after after an ankle injury a couple weeks ago. Uh, Robert Johnson will get a good, you see the replay, Robert Johnson will get a good play on the outside. Too. There's their leading tackler, Antoine Bradford, uh, missing the tackle. And a good running back is going to make people miss. We didn't block him, he made him miss. And uh, Big play for, for, for Auburn, but uh, wasn't a lot going on after this in the first half. <laughs> you are so right, Coach. Here's a <laughs> quick screen uh, out to their wide receiver. Rashad Walker played a good football game, tackled Third well. Five. Here's an option play. We knew they were going to run quite a bit, and we just overrun him a little bit, but uh, we'd rather fun. quarterback run it on, on an option than, than the pitch man. Albert can't move after one first down. Here's Vandy again. Here's a uh, draw play. Gave us a little bit of a problem, but I thought we tackled a lot better against the draw the first half than we did the second. Here's Third the option three. again. Third and three. Good yeah, tackle yeah. by Carlos Dansby. Good car. Good, good tackle. So that stops them again. Auburn is three and out again, and now we're late in the quarter. Here's a bootleg pass off the draw. They throw it down to number 24. You got to catch them. Uh, they had some guys open at times, but again, this is a throw and catch game. And you, you have to execute. Second and five at the Auburn 38. Good pressure and uh, sack there. I tell you. Uh, Dexter Murphy's come a long way since he's been at Auburn. Good, good, good play from LaGrange, Georgia. There's a little screen pass. A big hit by Horace Willis. He continues to get better as the year goes on. Andy attempts a field goal to start the second uh, quarter, and it's wide left, as you can see. Defense played well the first half. Here's a bootleg pass. Jason finds Marcel Willis, who got his first start of the season after an ankle injury. And Big play from Marcel, get it past midfield. Out at the 43-yard line of Vanderbilt on second and nine. Brandon Johnson for plus seven. We're going to have to do a little bit more of this with Brandon, but again, what they were giving us was the pass and not the run, and here's a missed ride, uh, wide right by, by Damon on a 53-yard yeah. attempt. Yeah, that's a, long, that's, that's a long way. Long, long way into the win. Here's another quick screen. Good tackle by Brandon Johnson on defense, playing both ways. Continues to get better defensively. At the 48 now, on second and long. Uh, good pressure. I thought we got a lot better pressure the first half on Stricker, uh, on Zolman the first half than we did the second. Here's another another uh, throw out to the, to the right, to the left by, by the quarterback. Good tackling by the Auburn defense and make them punt. And this, this little play here got us in the hole for the rest of the half. Field position was important in several of the instances in this game. Down at the end, it was important. Here's a six-yard completion to Robert Johnson, but we needed seven on the third and seven, so we have to punt. Great coverage here. Boris Robinson on the coverage. Big play. Okay, Vandy at their own 45 on first down. Here's a draw play again. Boris pounds on the tackle. Reggie Torbor, Javar Mills. Here's third and long. Third and long, great pressure. Gets to the quarterback, makes him throw unbalanced and good coverage. Here's a big play. We punt, and you can't score unless they control the football on the fumble. So he just fumbles it there. All you have to do is just fall on it. Uh, if they don't have control of the punt, you can't score. You can't pick up and run it, so they call that a muff. So we take over right there. So Horace didn't get to have his moment. That would have been a big play. Here's a good run by Cassinius Moore. Cassinius got his first start. Ronnie Brown still injured a little bit on that uh, shoulder that he's got. Deep in bandy territory, but giving it back. Well, we, we missed the, the block on number 40 right there, and the running back was looking at the ball, uh, run, uh, the defender, instead of the 
the ball and we turn it over. And here's a little trick play, but we smelled it out. Rashad Walker smelled smelled it out. Woody Woodenhofer's big on his trick plays, but he wasn't going to have that this year. So it was not much of a second quarter, but Auburn clings to that uh, seven nothing lead at the half. Coach, that uh, second quarter was uh, not a thing of beauty. No, we didn't play very well the second quarter on offense. Defensively, we held our own, but I knew seven to nothing wasn't going to be the score that was going to. Uh, win this ball game for us. Okay, and we'll come back and we will see that exciting second half in just a minute. Back and we'll see the exciting second half in just a minute. Coach, uh, one of your quarterbacks is interning with the Auburn Network, Daniel Cobb, and he has a piece here I think you'll enjoy. He uh, talks to some of his fellow uh, teammates about how they spend their spare time. For Auburn safety, Stanford Simmons and Rover Rashad Walker, the competitive fire that burns each Saturday on the football field carries over to the everyday life of being a student athlete. As much time and effort as these players put into representing Auburn athletics, they still find time to have a little fun on their own playing video games. We compete with each other that like as if we was on the opposite team, so, you know, it's a lot of fun. This video game not only gives the guys something to do with their time away from school and sports, but helps them see the real game of football in a whole new light. It really helps you see what the coaches go through, because you know you're trying to, you know, you have to come up with a scheme and a strategy like to score on your opponent or to stop them on defense. Playing video games as kids provided more than entertainment for Simmons and Walker. It sparked their interest to experience the game firsthand. I started playing the video games first before I really started playing. Um, that's what really got me into wanting to play. I just started playing the video games and I had liked it and um, start having fun playing the game, so I just asked my dad to um, sign me up to play football. There we go, get up here. Uh, make a miss. I guess we could say that Auburn football owes a special thanks to the video game producers for sparking an interest in two of our starting defensive players. And the word is that the video games are not only enjoyed by Simmons and Walker, but a majority of the players spend their time competing with one another. This is Daniel Cobb for the Auburn Network. Player of the week. We'll get back into the second half now. You needed to establish uh, the offense and the defense because things were a little shaky in the second quarter. Well, you always know when you have a low scoring first half that something's gonna happen in the second half. Sure enough, both teams made mistakes, but mo both teams scored. The great thing uh, that I thought that we learned when they scored, we came back as you'll notice, the second half and scored every time right after they scored, and I thought that was a key. Orange-clad Auburn cheerleader, that new coach? Well, it, it, this year they started decided getting the orange, too, and here's the fake punt they run. Our defensive end gets too far up the field, but good call by Vanderbilt. Kept us off balance, and, uh, you know, when things not going your way, you need to do things like that, and, and we've done it before in the past. And here's a play that really concerns me. They scored pretty easy inside the five on this draw play, and we just missed tackles. It wasn't anything. We just missed the tackles. We're going to have to tackle better inside the red zone. 7-7 seven, seven now. It's a new ball game. 7-7, seven, seven, but, you know, I'm proud of our team. Here's a little quick slant, and they get a face mask here, but we they don't call it right there. Uh, it runs out of bounds. We scored in two plays. Here's a great play from Jason Campbell, and we'll have two shots of it. Uh, we, we call this a naked boot. Uh, throws the ball down the field on a go route to Robert Johnson. They pass in a pair right there. They don't throw the flag, but uh, he still catches the ball in, in the end zone. Here you get a better shot of it. Great protection. Again, our game plan in the second half was to fake the run on first down uh, because they were playing run defense. They gave us all day to throw the ball. Again, there's a pass interference uh, and uh, gets the ball over. Rojo adjusted to the ball well, yeah, too. Really just caught the ball well. Here we come back, we're getting a little bit of pressure. Uh, good sack there by Reggie Torbor. Good inside move. And you don't sack him much, though. He gets rid of the ball. Yeah, he gets rid of it too quick. Now that shotgun gives you problems. Uh, here's something that concerns me, and Joe Walkins continues to not look at the ball. He's starting to look at the, the, the cover guy before he, he catches the ball, and it really costs us. Here's a, another missed tackle on the draw play. Uh, a turnover cost us, and again, turnovers and penalties were the, Really, the big difference in us is going a couple more touchdowns. Tie game now, and they are really in it. The uh, Bandy fans are seeing a little hope here. Well, good throw and catch to Tim Carter there. They started to blitz a little bit more, and we took advantage of the slants. And here's a big play from uh, Damon. I tell you, Damon continues to play uh, play good, kicks the ball, and uh, 
Carlos Rogers there downs the ball about the one yard line. And got him in the hole and enable us to get good field position. Going to hold him on the goal line, too. Here's a, another big play out of Reggie Torbor. Played one of his better games. I thought our defensive line played well at times and gave up too many yards on the draw. Here's a major play out of Carlos Dansby. Played zone defense. Uh, good block there. You got to block high when you intercept the ball. It's just like uh, returning a punch. You can't block below the waist. Carlos Dansby's going to make a lot of plays here in the next few years. Here's Carnell Williams over the top. Second touchdown of the day. Good blocking up front. Uh, big play from the defense. I thought John Levitt, his defensive staff, did a great job of calling defenses, mixing it up. Uh, this is a very explosive offense. Andy moves it right down. They found their rhythm on offense. Well, here's one we're, we're disappointed. We're, we're going to get a second shot of this. And they give them a touchdown here. Uh, you make the call. They got to have both feet down. Got to have control. And uh, so, therefore, you make the call on that. We won't get any farther. But uh, here we go. We're, we get the ball, move it down. Uh, we have two shots at making a, a first down, but we don't make it. But Here's a big play. Big play out of out of Marcel Willis. It's good to see Marcel back out on the field and we're moving the ball down. You know, they get us in a, a third and 30. I thought this was probably the major play in the game in the second half. We get 21 yards on third and 30 off a little screen pass to Cassinius Moore. Sets us up an opportunity to at least try a long field goal. 50, uh, 49, 49 yards. yards. Yeah. And uh, Damon puts it right down the middle. Oh, boy. Boy, is that, is that money in the bank oh, when you that, got a guy who can kick it from out there? That's experience pays off, and, of course, Damon's earned his way. Now they get the ball back uh, with with less than three minutes, and uh, our they defense lose. has got to hold them. And they throw the ball down the field, and good play out of uh, Tavares Pounds. He's starting to play better. Here's a uh, boot off the draw play that they throw. Another big play right there out of... Uh, our defensive backs. Two timeouts to ice him. Here's and a big field goal, and of course you can say we're we're not running with, we're we're not even thinking about blocking. And there's Greg Zolman. I'm glad he's gone. I tell you, the kid's had a great career, right set some records at Vanderbilt. Well, he's done a good job. I know he's disappointed. They played a lot of close games, and uh, I've been on that side before, where it just doesn't look like anything happens for you at the end of a game. You know, when you're struggling to win, but his players played hard and. It was a great football game. 24-21 Auburn. What a win it was, and your uh, your kicker wins the game. That's got to help his confidence as well. I tell you, the, the, the kickers came to me and said, Coach, let's take the win in the fourth quarter. Let's give them the win in the third quarter. I, you know, they kind of took me back a little bit. But it was a great decision, and, and it worked out for us. 49 field goal eventually wins the game for us. Back with a word about Mississippi State in just 7 9, 14. Coach, Mississippi State will be in a foul mood. They got thrashed by Florida. Yeah, it'll be, it'll be a, uh, important and a tough game for us. Uh, but we're going home. Thank goodness we're going home after two <laughs> weeks. It, it'll, it'll be a, a, a great sight for us to run into the jungle with 87,000. We're going to need everybody there in orange because it'll be a very tough game. But we are 2 0 in the conference going for number three. Auburn and Mississippi State next time, and we'll have the replay for you here on the Auburn Football Review. Thank you for watching. See you next week. This has been the Auburn Football Review, brought to you by Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Alpha Production. Squarely at midfield, Moore dots the eye. It's going to be Cassinius Moore taking the handoff on the sweep, breaking a tackle. Moore to the 45, the 40. He's got open field, 35, 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5. He's gone. Touchdown, Auburn! The snap, the spot, kick is away. Plenty long, plenty high. It is good! Duval, 47 yards with room to spare, 18 seconds to go, and Auburn has assumed the lead at 16-14. Nobody picked us to be where we at right now. We leave the SEC West right now. Ain't nobody picked us. They picked us last, dog. No. And now we up top. We lead our own destiny right now. They said we can't play four quarters. Well, they just saw it on national television. Offense, you didn't hit on all cylinders, but you got it done. You kept the ball moving, made some big plays. And what I was proud last year, we didn't make a first down against these guys in the first quarter running the ball. We ran it right at them today. Let it go, Steve Moe. Right yeah. Let it go, 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 Let it go,
Take them out, baby. That's a win for everybody. Like like Zoe says, nobody gave us a chance. And we're still not there. We're three and zero in the conference. We got a long ways to go. Yeah, and we got a tough one next week. That doesn't make any difference. What makes a difference right now is we played, we came together, we won a close game, and we did this for the seniors. You seniors have not beaten this group, but you have now. You can hold your heads up high. You played hard. You kept this group going all week long. We practiced well. We got better every day, and nobody lost their cool. We just kept playing good and playing good and playing good. So the, I'm giving the ball this week, James. We're giving it to the seniors. You guys, good job. Yeah. Yeah. Let me tell y'all something. That's a good football game, but men, we, we a family. And no more, nobody won't break this family up. You hear what I say? Nobody won't break this family up. Nobody won't break this family up. Offense, you hang in there. Defense, you hang in there. Special teams, y'all hung in there. Duval, thank you again. Good snap, Lindsey. Everybody, little things. But we a family. We won't be broken up. We are a family. All right? Seniors, we got one. Kenny, where you at? Four years. Four years. Yes, sir. For y'all, baby. Yes. Last couple weeks, man, I love y'all. I swear I do. I do anything in the world for any of y'all. Hey, let's get it up. Come on. Let's go. This is the Auburn Football Review with Coach Tommy Tuberville. Brought to you. And welcome to the Auburn Football Review. Another Damon Duvall winning field goal and the Tigers win over Mississippi State 16-14. I know what that means to you and your staff, Coach. What a game, I tell you. Well, this was big for the whole program. We, we're in a situation where we got a chance to, to possibly uh, get close to, to winning the western side, but we had to win at home and had to win this game. Uh, Mississippi State's a good football team. They've always give us, given us problems offensively because they blitz so much. And with a young quarterback, I was concerned, but hey, our defense and kicking game stepped up. And you built some chemistry in that post-game dressing room. That was pretty special. Well, the last two weeks, I think this team is really starting to come together because of two close games. We've had to play hard and, and overcome some obstacles, and uh, it was good, to, good for the seniors. Uh, I could see a lot of tears in the, in the dressing room at the end of the game because they wanted this one so much because Mississippi State had beat us four times in a row, and I'm just proud for them and, and for everybody. We had a great crowd and a lot of orange, and it's very, very loud. Let's go to the dressing room now and talk to some of those players. We played great, man, both offense and defense, man. We we made some mistakes, man, but, um, I mean, it's a big win for us, man. The seniors haven't beat them in four, four years, man. It, it's really it's really, um, it's really to heart, man. We take this to heart, man. We, we're, we're in that driver's seat in the West, and we're looking forward to next week, man. Yeah, that's the main thing to count. You know, we got an SEC win, 3-0 in the SEC West now. You know, I know we didn't play our best, but we still won. That's the only thing to count, and we know that we can get better. You know, I know I can get better. I learned a lot tonight, you know. There's a couple of throws I should have made, and I didn't. But, you know, I'm just glad our team defense came through and our offense got tough at the end. And Damon Duval, two weeks in a row, he made a great field goal, you know. And I'm just thankful for the seniors. You know, this one was for them. Oh, it's a big win for us. You know, we 3-0 we in the SEC. We control our own destiny. But we, we still can't get complacent. we got to work hard each week to, to uh, be better each week. Right. You know, it was a great feeling going out. You know, we knew warming up, the wind was blowing, you know, from coming that way, and that it was going to be tough trying to kick a long field goal. You know, I had complete confidence. Coaches had complete confidence, and we just went out like every other kick, you know. Unfortunately, earlier, the 57-yard field goal, we kind of got jumbled up, and we should have called a timeout and, and took the time to get set. And, you know, we just made sure this one we were on the field, you know, set up in time, lined it up right. And, you know, Jeremy Wells had a great snap. Justin Fesco had a great hold, and we just put it through. But we played four quarters for once this year, you know, and I really don't know what to say about it. I'm just happy. I'm glad this helped us out going into next week. This meant a lot. The defense was 
was the key to, 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 to in this game today, too. Yeah, definitely. They stepped it up. Um, you know, they got great leaders out there. They got Rashad Walker. They got, you know, Mark Brown. You know, they got Roger Hood. And those guys out there, you know, they really keep the defense pumping and moving. You know, you know, Coach Lovett came with a great defensive plan, and they played real physical. You know, that was the key to the game. Stadium, Auburn 16, Mississippi State 14. The Tigers knew this was going to be a defensive struggle all the way, and it turned out that way. Let's take a look at some of the action in the first half. The Eagle made a pass by the press box for the visiting media coach. Beautiful, beautiful day. Beautiful day, and uh, I want to thank all of our fans for being patient. Patience is going to be a, a big thing in sporting events from now on because of September 11th, but uh, you got to get there early and uh, and get ready for the game early, but uh, great pregame ceremony, and I thought our Honoring people were great. Honoring firemen and policemen. Yeah, firemen and policemen there on the sidelines there when we came out. And, uh, great start for a great game. Auburn uh, had a drive, but it stalled, and this is State's first drive. Big defensive play by Carl Stansby. He continues to make plays. James Cayer also in on that big play. Here we got pretty good pressure from the outside. And Rashad Walker on the pass breakup. Our defensive backs are, are really improving. Auburn's next possession there at the 27. Here's a bootleg pass to Brandon Johnson. A play that's been big for us the last couple of weeks. Good first down play. At the 39 now. Then we'll start the Cassinius Moore show. Yes. Look how quick his feet are. He's getting a lot better off the knee surgery a couple of years ago. Finally healthy. Finally healthy and good blocking up front. I tell you, we, we were really concerned last year. We didn't make, made 18 yards rushing on these guys. And I think in this game, uh, we had over 100 in the first quarter. Here comes the touchdown. Here comes Great a big block. play. Watch the block with Brandon Johnson Ooh. right there. Uh, breaks Cassinius in the in the open and runs for the touchdown. Again, it's a big play. Big play for us. We, we're going to have to have big plays like this to be successful in offense because we're not really consistent enough yet to, to be a good offensive football team. Another opportunity coming here. State's going to turn it over. They're breaking tackles. We're going to have to lock up. Uh, Carlos Dansby causes a fumble. Ryder could cut, recovers it. And another big play by our defense. Uh, bend but don't break. First down at the 22. Play action pass, a great protection. And uh, almost threw the ball behind the receiver, Tim Carter, but they get called for pass interference. Another big play. But Auburn still has to give it up, and State is driving. Got a lock up there, Mark Brown. Lock up. Good play by Don Terry's Thomas. I tell you, he continues to get better. Been playing hurt a little bit, but uh, that's the mark of a good football player. There's uh, Carlos Dansby, Mark Brown on the tackle. Stop him on third down, but a penalty keeps the drive. Offsides. Down. Again, there's Mark Brown on another big play. Carlos Rogers, we're swarming the ball. We're making them throw the football to beat us. And again, that's that's going to have to be our forte this year. Here's another play. We bounce the ball outside. A good swarm tackle there by Roger Hood. Mark Brown, M Marcus White, force him to kick a field goal. And I mean, he kicks that thing right down the middle. 43 yarder for State, and they're on the board, 7-3. Auburn's next possession, they're at the 27. Another run by Cassinius Moore. Good blocking by Lorenzo Diamond, a Mississippi boy. Uh, really enjoyed this game, and of course, all of our Mississippi players uh, look like they played good games. Here's a throw by uh, Jason Campbell. Again, one of those things that can't happen. We had to win behind us, and don't underthrow the long ball. And uh, good learning experience for him. Okay, State going the other way. Going to stop him on this drive. Got to get better pass rush. Uh, throw the ball down the field. Well, the secondary was yeah. they were hitting hard. Carlos Rogers made a good play. I thought we played better. Uh, a little bit tighter on the receivers this game. There's Marcus White on the big play. Good good contain by Rashad Walker, but good pursuit by Marcus White. We didn't have that last week. There's another good pursuit for the backside in, in uh, James Cagher. Ruled it, not a fumble. There's Alton Moore in the game, another Mississippi player. Here's a toss sweep to Cornell Williams. Good blocking on the outside by Lorenzo Diamond. You can tell their defense knows how to run, though. They've got, they've got a great pursuer in defense. Auburn has to punt. Now I stayed at the 20. Here's play action pass. Roger Hood on the coverage. Great coverage over the top. And then, again, people try to go deep on us. We're playing better. Here's a, another reverse. Uh, Ronaldo a Timmy on, on the play. Uh, big play. Uh, sack for a loss. So they punt it, and here comes Cassinius Moore. Cassinius Moore bang it down the field. Again, we're making plays on the left and the right side. Our offensive line is getting better. We're not as consistent. Here we try a 56 or 57-yard field goal. Uh, just didn't catch all of it. Had the distance, but uh, didn't get it. He, he learned 
the crosswind from that one, Coach, because yeah. he got it right later. That's exactly right. We we'll play zone defense in the red zone in this game. It really helped us. Uh, they're on the goal line now. Yeah. About, looks like they're about to get in for a yeah, touchdown. Yeah, I thought, I thought our defensive coaches did a good job calling plays, swarming the ball. Mark Brown, uh, DeMarco McNeil, there they cut our uh, defensive line, throw the ball over the middle. We weren't going to let them in the end zone. That was a great job. I thought big plays there and forced them to call the kick the field goal at the half was a big, big play for us. So Auburn holds at the goal line and holds a lead of 7-6 at the half. One of the interesting stories within a story is the interaction between coaches on the intercom, the headsets, as they talk about strategy and plays and that sort of thing, Coach. Well, it, it'd probably be interesting to the fans because there's a lot of conversation that goes on and, and uh, some heated moments, but uh, our coaches do a good job. And as you can probably tell them on, on, on my headphones, I, I get a little bit excited sometimes. Let's eaves, eavesdrop a little bit. And Auburn. Let's go, everybody right here, let's go. Hot, hot, hot. Hot, what you think? ADO, what you think? Take the ball. Why would you take the ball off the line of scrimmage with six inches, no? Field goal, field goal, field goal, let's go. Wing check. Tell him wing check. That thing was 20 yards over his head. You gotta be kidding me. Hey! You blitz into a toss, it's really not any good. You're losing everybody inside. Look the ball in, protect the ball. Hey, no penalties! You gotta, you gotta be aggressive. These guys can't outrun you. You gotta be aggressive. Hey, we're gonna win this thing on the field goal. We're gonna wing over to 13 next time. You'll have all day. Yeah! 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 Pretty good stuff, Coach. Of course, you fire your coaches a few times in the game. Right? I don't remember most of that stuff <laughs> other than, than strategy, but uh, it gets a little heated, and and uh, we, we kid about a lot of it after the game. But, you know, we put so much into these football games that uh, the heat of the moment sometimes gets to each coach or me, and... Uh, uh, but after the game, all's well and good. <laughs> okay, let's. We'll be back in just a minute with uh, the second half action. What a what a second half. Kickoff takes it right down to the goal line. It's first and goal at the six. Great goal line stand here by our defense. We've been a little bit on that play, but here I think there's two or three plays in a row. Where we stop them. There's one. We stop them on the one yard line. We play a lot better goal down, goal line defense. Here's the next play. Carlos Rogers on the big play right there, taking his feet out from underneath him. And now you know they're going to go over the top. Both our linebackers you see come over the top. Don Terry Thomas makes the hit. Mark Brown on the other side on the big right. stop. I tell you, that was a major, major play and sequence in the game. This is a fourth and one to get the first down. And uh, old Brandon Johnson comes in. He's going to get you a yard. I think that was a good call. Fourth and 15. Fourth and 15. I tried to make something happen to get the momentum back. Good run by Damon. Unfortunately, it was 14-yard gain, and we needed 15 yards. It didn't work. And now I watch State come back and take their first lead of the night. Well, the key here is we get no pass rush. He has all day to throw it, and our defensive backs overplay it. And good throw, good catch by them. They, they executed, come back, made a big play. And they go for two and make the score 14-7, to seven, Mississippi State. And we come back and make a pretty good drive here. Jason stay in the pocket, throws the ball pretty good there to, to uh, Tim Carter. Big play. Got to answer. Got to answer. As you can tell here, we're getting better better uh, protection by our offensive line. Almost get the ball in the end zone. That was a third down call and trying to throw the corner out to Tim Carter. So we line up and kick the 30-yard field goal, and he kicks it right down the middle. I thought our holder and snapper did an excellent job. Justin Fesco and, and uh, Jeremy Wells, Michael Lindsay, they don't get enough credit for what we're doing on special teams. But here we come back on defense, and Carlos Dansby makes a big play. Fourth and four. Fourth and four. Eddie Grand comes up with this new uh, block punt this week, bringing Tim Carter off the corner. Uh, Got to learn to bend down and pick that ball up. We're not bending our knees on the on the on the block, but uh, Had a Carlos to score there. That's right. Uh, uh, we did a good job. Here's a third down call. We try to run Jason around the right side. The ball can't uh, ground can't cause a fumble, so we get the ball to two. Patience again. Kick, patience and kick a field goal. They had a good rush there, and that's a key right there. The next time we're going to put two guys to block him. If you'll notice on the winning field goal, we weren't going to let that guy block the field goal from from uh, 50 yards. But uh, here we come back, and now they go field three times. They get the ball three possessions, and we, they go three and out. That's a big key to this 
this, this win this week. Stop them there on third and one. We were going to force them to throw the football, and they wouldn't throw it, so we, we made the big plays. They punted away. Now here's our drive to get the ball down the field. This is what you call concentration. Throws, Tim Carter catches it, gets hit, drops it, falls right in his lap, and he makes the catch. Probably the biggest play of the game. But this drive uh, eventually stalls, and uh, with time running out, you got to stop them one more chance. Cesar Mills on the sack. Spencer Johnson. Now we start running the football on the last drive just to get us in field goal position. That's confidence in your kicker. Yeah, and that, you know, they were playing a three-man front. We said, heck, let's just throw, run the ball and get it down there. Again, you can tell we, we went wing over there just to block their number 13 from blocking, having a chance to block it. Good snap, good hole, and Damon kicks it through. You can't say enough about Damon Duvall now. He's won two weeks in a row for us. Oh, my. But, again, you have to be in the position to do that. And our offense and defense got us in that position, and, and we won the, won the game. 10-game winning streak at home, 16-14 Auburn. The four-year losing streak to Mississippi State is over, and the home win streak is protected. Coach. And we win it in the last minute on a 48-yard field goal into the win. What, what a, what a performance out of Damon Duvall and, and the entire team. I, I tell you, you have to give a hat off to defense and the offense. Put us in the position to win the game. We won it. We're to two about the Florida Gators when we come back. Auburn is three and zero in the conference in the all-important West Division with another big game coming up. The only uh, weakness I can see in those Gators coaches, maybe Steve Spurrier's back. That's about it. And his putting. I've, that, I've well, played yes. golf with him. Yeah. But uh, got a good football team. But we're playing at home. And uh, we played them twice, of course, last year. And we, we know a lot about their football team. Uh, they're on a roll right now. But, again, uh, you know, we, we're 3-0 and in the conference. We got a good football team. We got a good kicking game. We just need to continue to get better. And, Fill this thing up next week and uh, be real loud. That's enough said about the Gators. We'll see you next week here on the Auburn Football Round. Fourth down and goal from inside the one. Same formation. They're in the eye. Cobb calling the play. He has it. He drives on the quarterback sneak. He's in. Touchdown, Auburn! Now here's Cobb going to give it off. Butler. Butler breaks one tackle behind the line. Butler flashes off the right side. He's in. Touchdown! Duvall kicks it away high long it is good it's good ladies and gentlemen the Auburn Tigers have done the impossible they have absolutely shocked the football world a 21 point underdog to the number one ranked team in America the Auburn Tigers have defeated the Florida Gators 23 to 20 at Jordan Hare Stadium yes I do believe in miracles. Auburn Tigers, baby! Woo! War Eagle, baby! War Eagle! Ah! point underdog. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Pick, pick, we were picked number 55 at the beginning of the year. Picked last in the conference by most people. And let me tell you something, guys. Y'all just put on one great effort. One great effort. That was a team effort. That wasn't individual. Not one person in here did any more than the other. We needed to crowd in the stand. You played with your heart and you saw, and the good Lord gave you an opportunity to get it done. Everybody feel this feeling right now, guys, because it doesn't happen very often. It doesn't happen very often when you have an opportunity to take the number one team on and you whip them. This is for all the guys in here that are seniors. Everybody. Last three ball games, <laughs> last four ball games, we've won in the fourth quarter. All the way down to the end.
This is the Auburn Football Review with Coach Tommy Tuberville. Brought to you by Coca-Cola. Welcome to the Auburn Football Review. We're in the Heisman Room here at Auburn, just off the Auburn dressing room where things were pretty exciting a few minutes ago, Coach. I, I've seen a lot of Auburn games, but I don't think I've seen one like that one. What, what a game. And, and you, you kind of sat on your seat the whole game. You know, we, were, we led most of the game, and, and, uh, and we still never felt like the ball game was ours until the end because we knew how powerful Florida was, and uh, I'm just proud of the whole team and the fans. It was a great night for Auburn, Auburn family, Auburn football, Auburn athletic department. It was just a tremendous win. And that minus yardage they had rushing the ball was such a factor. you got to be able to run the football to win consistently, especially on the road. We always talk about that, and you have to stop the run, too. And our game plan tonight defensively was to stop the run and, and make Grossman throw it. That sounds funny, doesn't it? Because <laughs> yeah. he's been throwing for like yeah. five or 600 yards a game. But last year, we played them twice, and they kept us off balance. They, they'd run it. They'd throw it. They'd run play action. Uh, they'd get five or six yards of carry on the run, and just just kept our defense uh, confused and and tonight we we did a super job of stopping the run I think that minus yardage and then of course when they threw the football then uh, we worked all week on tackling because they're gonna catch their balls uh, so uh, you have to tackle and don't give them that extra, extra yardage what what a uh, great way to end a game that was so suspenseful you know for for three and three and a half hours precious stuff let's go to the Auburn dressing room and talk to some of the players I, we had faith in ourselves we just did what Coach Witt told us to, you know. He had faith in us to put us in there, and we had to go with what we had. So God bless us with a victory and play hard. See, last week when I saw a couple linebackers go down against Mississippi State, I knew I had to step up and, and play this week. And they really weren't sure if I was 100% healthy, but I had to go because we had no one else. We just came in the game plan, you know, knowing that we hung around with them, you know, that we was going to keep getting stronger and stronger. We had to limit the big plays. And we know if we limit that big players, that it would keep us in the game longer. I mean, we just, you know, we just thrived off playing good team ball and having faith. So nobody picked us to be here at the beginning of the year, and nobody picked us to beat them. So all we had was this, you know, this, this Auburn team and, uh, you know, the fans and this university behind us. Uh, first of all, all praise be to God. Second of all, you know, we work. We really, really work. But I tell you, we got a great coaching staff. You know, they're putting us in a position to get these kind of wins. They bust our bust in practice. They bust our bus in practice, man, and that's what it's all about. That's what it's like. It's, it's, there's no one person there. It's all a family. People are going to notice that eventually. I don't know what we got to do, but they're going to notice that eventually. This is a family, and the Lord's leading us on. Uh, I knew all of us could compete with them all week, man. We just had to believe in it, and, and we did that. And, um, you know, we gave up some plays. I, I mean, me personally, I gave up a um, touchdown, but um, we just had faith in each other, and we kept kept pushing. Yo, Coach Mazzoni, he came to me and said, you know, you know, spend a little extra time this week. Uh, if we're not moving the ball, we might, you know, probably might give you a chance. And uh, and uh, sure enough, it ended up like that. And um, and and I got my chance. I took advantage of it. And we, you know, we pulled out a win. So forth. Did you feel that figure that might help you a little bit? I thought it would. I thought the rain would probably help a little bit more. But it was gusty. But both teams had to play with it, and and uh, so it was equal on both sides. But uh, going into the game, we were 21 point underdog playing the number one team in the country, and our players were a little bit upset about about all that. That, uh, that talk about how, how, uh, how great they were, and no talk about us. So uh, we'll see what happens going into these highlights. Uh, let's get into the first half. The Eagle flying in the jungle, Coach. Well, it was a great night. Uh, we had a great student section. They got there early, and fans stayed with us, and it was a fun night all, all around. Auburn's three and out on the first possession. Here come the Gators. Mayo Sal makes his first tackle uh, as, as a starter as an Auburn Tiger. And he played a great game. Here you can tell we're getting pressure on Grossman early. And I thought that was a big key. Stopping the run, getting pressure, and making them kick field goals. And this is their first one. They go ahead three to nothing. 45-yarder by Jeff Chandler. But the Auburn kicking game was superior in almost every way. What's this? Uh, this, is, this is a great look of... Tim Carter setting up the, the coverage. Starts down the left hash mark, cuts it back, uses his blockers. Uh, excellent block downfield. You see Jarris McIntyre, uh, Derek Graves on the block there, and I think it's something like 60 yard, 60 yard return. Sets up our first uh, first scoring drive, and it's a field goal, but nonetheless, we come back and we get a lot of confidence out of this first drive. So it's a 3-3 game, trading 45 yard field goals. They come back and uh, here we run a little stunt, and Reggie Torbor on the on the tackle on uh, Gillespie. And the big key last year was we couldn't stop their run. It got us confused defensively. But here's a uh, good pressure in Rashad Walker. We run a zone blitz, and 
Grossman wasn't able to pick up the, the coverage. Yeah, they come back and he throws it downfield. Uh, Roger Good on the coverage on Gaffney and uh, just covered like a blanket. I can't believe he threw that ball, but great uh, interception. And we can't do anything and have to punt. And another another key here is we're punting into the wind, and you have to make tackles after the punt. And Rashad Walker gives them no return. Okay, Daniel Cobb's in the game. He'll play in just a moment. We've got to stop him first. Daniel Cobb comes in, but. Uh, Big play there by Philip Pate. Philip Pate, uh, his first playing time after serious knee surgery. And we force him to punt. Ryder could gets the ball, and you have to make some yardage on your punt returns because it really takes the pressure off your offense making those extra first downs. And uh, our, our special teams were outstanding. Here, uh, Daniel Cobb comes in, throws a wheel route to Cassinius Moore. Great uh, uh, setup by, by, the, by the out and up. And good catch. Third and nine. Third and nine. We throw to... DeAndre Green makes an excellent catch, one-handed catch. We decide to go for fourth down here. We run what we call drive. And it's another throw to DeAndre Green across the middle. He catches it. The ball connect, cannot cause a fumble and uh, keeps the drive alive. Same drive, second quarter. You have to run the football to win close games. And Cassinius Moore continues to do just that. And again, on the right side, you have uh, Pacello and, and uh, Crittington. On the left side, you have Simmons, Nyland. Hart McGarry and we just pound it right down the middle and here we we change our from last week we didn't do a very good job of uh, quarterback sneaking this week our offensive coaches changed our alignments and did a good job and touchdown Auburn Tigers well play drive stop the run Reggie Torbor again up the middle on on stopping the run here's a third down play watch third out to more come across knock him back on the third down uh, try and uh, we were successful here we come back and run a little option play and it's a new play we read the end uh, Cassinius Moore gets the handoff from uh, Cobb. A little later on, you'll see Cobb keep the ball. Here's a big play uh, to Jarius McIntyre. Good protection by the offensive line. Last year, we were throwing off our back foot. This year, we had plenty of time. This is long Florida drive just before the half. There's a key right there. Again, they're going to catch their, their passes. We just need to make sure we tackle whenever they get, get the ball. And again, good pressure from our defensive front, good coverage, and uh, we force them into kicking another field goal. And that comes with just 21 seconds left on the clock. Halftime now, and this is the first time since 1997 that Florida has not scored a touchdown in the first half. Tigers, when they play Louisiana Tech next week, and if you can't get to the game, it's being offered on a pay-per-view basis. To order the game, cable subscribers simply need to call your local cable company. Residential C-band satellite dish owners can call 1-800-TV-STARS. And subscribers to the Dish Network order the game by tuning to channel 456. Kick off for the game next week, 1 o'clock Central. Okay, we're at halftime. It's 10 to 6. Uh, that has to be surprising. What was the dressing room like? Well, I think everybody was surprised except our players. And going into the dressing room at halftime, you could just feel the confidence. We were getting stronger as the game went along. We were playing a lot of players, new players on defense. And uh, a new kicking game was going to be a major factor, and our offense was also getting stronger. That's right. We didn't talk about return yardage. That was a big factor. Yeah, return game. yardage. Uh, we blocked very well on the kicking game. Uh, Damon punted seven times for 44 yards. And, we also, and we also and we also kick well into the wind on kickoffs. Now, I think that's a major advantage when you have a strong kicker, especially when you have a big win. We'll be back to take a look at the second half right after this. You felt like you had to play almost perfect. But as it turned out, in the second, the third quarter, you didn't play perfect at all. Made several mistakes and still were able to overcome it. Well, we made several mistakes. And I chose to take the win in the third quarter and, and because they were going to have the football. And I was hoping we'd get the ball more. But defensively, we weren't able to hold them. They moved up, up the, down the field pretty good, but they only got one touchdown. Let's uh, see that second half now. Florida has the option to start the second half, take the ball. And we took the win in the third quarter. I'd rather have it in the fourth quarter, but uh, we didn't want them the ball and the and the wind going into the third quarter. And uh, they make a long drive here. I get a little bit concerned because they were they were making some plays, but there's the play that really counted. Philip Pate on his first interception. Uh, outstanding effort. And again, it started with pressure from the front. Here we come back. We're lined up in an in a illegal formation. We did that twice. We're going to get that corrected this week because we had two big plays uh, with that formation. But uh, they get the ball back. And again, we're getting pressure. This is a major fight. I tell you what, if this kid can throw the ball on the run, and 
we got to stay in coverage. It was third and eight. They made the play there. Good Again, play because they score on the next they play. They score the next play, and uh, they've been doing this all year long. You run a little corner out. We didn't adjust to it. They made the play, and they go ahead 13 to 10. Auburn gets a bad snap, gets backed up. At the punt, and again, good coverage out of Carlos Rogers. Again, you can see they, the, the returning yardage was, out, was, was a major portion of our offense, and it, and it eliminates what your offense has to do. And there's the offensive line, a defensive line knocking the ball down. Uh, first time that we'd really gotten any pressure. This was unusual. Uh, they, 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 they punted on third down. Uh, I guess it was a good call because uh, uh, they were a little concerned about cutting in the wind. We thought, uh, of course, it was a turnover there, but again, they turn around and have to punt. They have a short punt. But they get the ball back, and our defense rises to the occasion. Carlos Rogers, Carlos Danby on the coverage. And they make them punt. They have a bad snap. This time they did punt on fourth down. Uh, Donna Young on the, on the pressure. Excellent, excellent job out of special teams. Second and goal, last play of the third quarter. Last play of the third quarter, and again, we're going to pound the ball in. and. Uh, we, we try to run a little outside play with Cassinius Moore, and they make a good play. Here we come. We put Chris Butler in the game. Uh, you're going to be able to see this out of a couple of looks. Uh, we outrun him to the end zone, and here are the end zone shots. You can see how he comes downhill. We look like we're going over the top. We keep the linebackers inside. Good block by Michael Owens on the outside. He breaks a tackle and outruns him to the corner of the end zone. Touchdown, Auburn. Auburn back in the lead. Well, it doesn't last long, as you can tell. They, they fake down the middle. We, we tip the ball, Mayo style on the inter interception. Again, this, this kid is a redshirt freshman, really nervous for the game. Uh, from Shades Valley came up with some big plays. And here we come back, we're running the ball up the middle. We felt like we, we could run the ball consistently if we just stayed with it. Uh, they held us, and Mr. Consistent comes in and kicks the field goal. Now it's a seven-point Auburn lead, but it won't last long. Doesn't last long. We, we, we bite on a post route, and they run around a little post go. And uh, here you can tell Jabbar Gaffney just outruns everybody and kind of lets us have it a little bit there. We make the tackle in the end zone. But uh, one of those things, you just have to make the plays. Uh, offensively, we come back and and uh, we throw the wheel route that we ran on the other side. And uh, Cassinius Moore down the sideline and uh, Daniel Cobb lays the ball in there. And here's a little play that, uh, that we put in, quarterback draw but we had an illegal formation. We, we got to have seven men on the line of scrimmage and crucial mistake. In the next play, we come back and, and uh, they do a good, Alex Brown does a good job of knocking the ball out of Daniel's hands. We've got to be more protective of the ball in the pocket. We did the same thing in Syracuse. They get the turnover. Seven but minutes our, left, you got to stop them. But our defense uh, makes plays. Rashad Walker on the stop after the catch. And then they come back, James Carrier on the pressure, overthrows the ball. Third and seven now. Third and seven, probably the biggest play in the game. And here we got pressure out of Reggie Torborn. He throws the ball low and they have to punt. We get the ball. We feel good about it. We run a little draw play and fumble the football. And a lot of people are going to say that uh, Florida gave us the game. We almost gave it back to them. Six and, minutes uh, to go now. And uh, they come back and they try a little razzle-dazzle. We're not going to bite up. And, and uh, we play the reverse very well. And Carl stands to be on the stop. And again, just watch this. We force him out of the pocket. I think that's a key problem with playing him. Get him out of the pocket where he has to throw on the run a little bit. He throws it downfield, and Carl Stansby makes an interception. And we give our offense and our kick game the opportunity to win the ball with a little over a minute to go. That's uh, actually four to go as they start this try. Four minutes to go. They get good pressure up the middle. They run a blitz. They take a gamble, and we throw the ball to the uncovered man, which is Lorenzo Diamond. Good read by Daniel Cobb. Here's another good play to uh, Jerry McIntyre on the outside on the second down and long. Uh, we convert. Here's the best 11-yard run Carnell Williams might ever make at Auburn University. I tell you, he makes two people miss, three people miss, and gets down to close to the first down. And uh, what a run. Then we come back and give it to him again on just our regular zone play, and he almost busts it for a touchdown. And that really set up the, the field goal opportunity for us. And here it is. Uh, they tried to block it from our right side. Daniel hits the hook, hook shot, so to speak, and really knocks it right down the middle. And I tell you what, a, what an outstanding pressure kick that was to win that ball game. Back to talk about La Tech in just a minute. After a win like that, how long, Coach, to get this team settled down? 
Well, I think everybody's going to have to come down, but uh, you need to savor this victory because it doesn't happen very often. You have a chance to beat the number one team, and you beat them. And uh, you, you beat them the way we've been winning. You, know, you, you, you kick field goals and you play defense. But uh, it'll be a tough assignment for, for me and the coaches to get them down. But, again, we, we want our players to understand how important it is to win games like that. But a, the sign of a good team is to bounce back and win again the next week. Well, that's our program. Join us next week, and we'll see how the Tigers are ranked, and we'll see how they do against Louisiana Tech. Don't forget the pay-per-view. This has been the Auburn Football Review, brought to you by Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Alabama. Asking Two tight ends, single wide out left, and Tech jumps offside. Here's Cobb. He's got a play to waste, and he throws in the end zone. It is caught. Touchdown, Auburn! McCown looking downfield. McCown feeling pressure. Dumps one over the middle. It is intercepted. Auburn's going to win. Lesson learned. Lesson learned. You got to keep playing. But finally, we picked it up about the middle of the third quarter before it got 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 too bad, and we learned a lesson. Well, we're learning a lot every week. My hair's getting gray. Offense, you made plays when you had to. Defense, you made plays when you had to. Kicking game, Damon, three out of four ain't bad. That ain't bad. We'll give you a little bit of help. We'll give you this week off. Good job. Hey, we're 6-1. and one. We got one more game before an open date. The rest of them are conference games. Now it's time to pick it up. We're going to road three out of four. We'll find out what we're made of. This is the Auburn Football Review with Coach Tommy Tuberville. Brought to you by Coca-Cola Classic. Life tastes good. Colum we greet you from the new Tiger Den just off of the Auburn locker room where uh, several hundred uh, prospects were here just a few minutes ago, Coach. And I think they saw a little more football game than they expected. I think a lot of people did. I tried to warn everybody what was going to happen. I knew it would come down to the last quarter. Uh, we, we, we gave them some plays in the third and fourth quarter we shouldn't have. But uh, I was proud defensively. We played more aggressive than we have. Uh, we did give up some plays, but we made some plays in the first half. Offensively, we scored some points. Daniel Cobb looked like he had a good game. Uh, our boy Damon Duvall missed the winning field goal uh, <laughs> on the last drive, but uh, we can't ask him to do that every week. It was probably good the way it happened because now we can get back to going, you know, normal business and, and uh, just play football. This is this crazy new kind of college football, nearly 1,100 yards of offense, big plays everywhere. Everywhere. I, I just disappointed the second half about how we tackled defensively. We played about as good as we could stop those guys the first half. Uh, we made them turn the ball over. We made some big plays. Uh, they're, it's kind of like basketball on the grass. Just throw it short and make plays. They've got some good athletes that they can get the ball to. And the quarterback's a good football player, too. I'm glad we don't play those guys for a while. I'm glad, too. Well, let's go to the dressing room now and talk to some of the players. It was a battle out there. I tell you what, I give Louisiana credit. Louisiana took a lot of credit. They brought the wood. Uh, they brought the lumber hitting us. And uh, they did it for four quarters. We made some big plays on offense. Uh, you know, I took it upon myself personally, you know, for putting our defense uh, in bad situations there. There's mistakes that really we can't have, especially coming up here in the uh, latter part of the season with all the SEC games left. Some I'm going to need to get corrected. Coach Will, he said he needed me, and this team needed me, and I felt like, you know, as long as I can at least hobble a little bit, I go out there give, it up, give it my all. And I was just in the right place at the right time. We knew it was coming into the ball game. They played everybody close. They got a great ball team, and um, I mean, we're going to have to regroup in this game right here and get better. I mean, each week we got to get better. Um, we knew it was going to be tough. Um, we, you know, we had a couple opportunities to put them, put them, put them away early, but, um, you know, we just didn't do it. You know, we let La Tech stay in there. You know, they're very experienced at, you know, staying in the game and pulling out at the end. But, you know, we, we stayed in there and we, we played to the end. Welcome back to the Tiger Den. You're about to see a tremendous football game on a beautiful day here at Jordan-Hare. Let's get right to it. Blue sky over the jungle, War Eagle up. What could be better, Coach? Beautiful uh, fall day, and this is the seniors and their parents. A uh, big day for the parents and the seniors, and, the, and a great win for them. And here come the Tigers out of the fog. Great crowd. Uh, the jungle was rocking once again, and a lot of orange in the stands. Auburn goes three and out. Tech... Uh, Takes the ball, turns it over, 
A lot of fumbles and interceptions the first half on both teams. Wide open offense, sometimes that's what happens. Daniel Cobb making his first start and gets a bad break there. Yeah, it wasn't, that wasn't his fault. It was tipped by Marcel Willis. you got to catch that ball, but uh, again, our defense holds. Force him to kick the field goal. And so they take a 3-0 lead off the turnover. Here comes Auburn. Going to put a long drive together, but uh, it's not going to amount to any scoring. Well, their defensive backs. And, oh, Carnell's getting stronger again off that ankle, and he's becoming the player that he and we all thought he would be. Second and 10 at the 35. DeAndre Green, one of his many catches of the day. This is his best game of the year. Again, we're getting the ball down the field more. That's what was encouraging. Uh, they play drive ends right here. Yeah, they tipped the ball. Daniel got his arm hit, and they intercepted. They made a good play, and uh, they got us off the field and got their offense back. Here comes a nice defensive play by Brandon Johnson. Brandon Johnson, uh, a little screen pass, a good tackle for a no gain. Watch this coverage. Good pressure up the middle. Ryder could his third interception in the last three weeks. He's really improving and really learning how to play the football other than just the receiver. That sets up Auburn at the 46 of Tech, and they're going to take it in. We go to the shotgun a little bit more in the second quarter, and there's a good uh, throw and catch to Lorenzo Diamond. Lorenzo also played a big role in this offense. First and 10 of the 32. Here's Casenius Moore on the outside zone. Good blocking downfield by Kendall Simmons, Hart McGarry, and Mike Pasello. At the 16-yard line now, free Here, play. Here's what we call purple. Draw them off sides, throw the fade route. Silas Daniels makes a one-handed catch. His he's first TD. Coach. First TD, and he, that's one of many he's going to make in his next few years. That was the last play of the quarter, second quarter now. This is a big quarter. There's DeMarco McNeil playing free safety. Actually, that was, he was, <laughs> we call it a spy. He says Comes he has back. the best hands on the he, team. He has pretty good hands, good athlete. And we come back next play and just set up the screen. You can tell it's a great screen, great block from Hart McGarry right there. And, and Kendall Simmons, and uh, we're, we're rolling pretty good offensively now. 14-3 to three now. They come right back and throw the screen pass, and this this was a play we were very concerned about. I tell you, they do us the best job anybody in the country running that play. 14-10 now. Auburn headed goalward. 14-10, throwing the ball downfield to, to uh, Marcel Willis. One of his catches. Got a fourth and one right here at your own 22. Coach. On 22, I said, let's go for it. We got to keep them off the field. Our offense was getting tired. We controlled the ball 20 minutes out of 30 in the first half, and that was a big key. You rolled a dice, and you got a seven on this uh, one. Ronnie Brown on the first down. You should be able to get a foot. So uh, third and seven. Made the gamble. It worked. Throw the ball. Oh. Look at that catch by DeAndre Green. I tell you, and, and it's good to see Daniel throwing those quick out routes. That's one thing he'd had problems with. Your good protection down the field. Throwing the ball again to DeAndre Green. He goes over the top. Touchdown, DeAndre. 21 to 10, Auburn. They come right back and drive and have to settle for a field goal on fourth and seven. So it's 21-13, but there's still some play left in this big first, uh, second quarter. Crossing right to Tim Carter, and Tim Carter in open field is not caught by anybody in this country. He has got speed that, that is to burn. 28-13 with a minute 37 left. Still not over. Still not over, knowing that uh, they can control the ball. Good play by Reggie Torbor, Mayo Sal. Third and two. Third and two. They throw a crossing route. Mayo Sal on the on the, uh, the defense there with Junior Rose Green. Then we get the ball. 115 to play. Knowing we could get a field goal if we get it down to the 40. Good catch by Marcel Willis. Good protection by the offensive line. Ben Allen had one of his better games. This is what I like out of uh, Daniel. Just be patient, set in the pocket, trust your offensive line, get it down the field, and good trash catch by DeAndre Green. Three seconds left in the half. Three seconds. He hits kind of a knuckleball, but knocks it in. We take a pretty good lead. Auburn scores 24 points in the second quarter and takes a 31-13 to 13 lead at the half. All good Auburn fans remember Auburn's great linebacker, Quentin Riggins, now a member of the Auburn Network. He wore number 41. He had an interesting chat the other day with another great Auburn defensive player who wears number 51, James Callier. Number 51, James Callier. And number 41, Quentin Riggins. Two generations of Auburn leaders cut from the same cloth. They share the same passion for the game, the same commitment, and the same love of Auburn. Recently, they visited on the field at Jordan-Hare Stadium. Got a good one for you. What's that? Beating Alabama, 
shut them out nine to nothing in Tuscaloosa. Tears. That, yeah, that, that, that was that's basically, the ultimate I mean, of emotions. That rain and it was so cold. Yeah. And, you know, I just remember I had somebody else on the side. Don Terry's on the sideline with me. He was just like, James. Uh, uh, I think it was uh, Mississippi State lost, or somebody had lost, yeah. and I was like, no, he's like, yeah, yeah. I was like, State. we going to SEC, yeah, and I, yeah. I saw the nine, I was like, okay, how much time we get, it was like three minutes, like, we going, I just, I just calls it up, man, that was such an, I mean, you talking about an aura, man, it was just, it was magical, and I really, you know, I think it was then that I, I understood, you know, this Auburn football thing yeah. really is kind of, yeah. it's more than meets the eye, you yeah. know, I, I, I know I'm not from this, this town, this community, but now I am, and that was right. kind of like my rights of passage of being an Auburn football player at right, that point. Right, right. There's the deep snap to Manning, going to give it to a setback, and he is taken down unceremoniously with a jarring tackle. How do you want this 87,000 group of fans to remember number 51? Well, in all honesty, I mean, it, 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 it would be nice, you know, to leave, you know, with the win and all that, you know, those things like that, but... I know it sounds cliche, Quentin, and I, I apologize for that, but I, I, all I want to be known as was just a guy that, that his life uh, modeled that of, 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 of a, a man after God's own heart. You know, I would like a win and things like that, but if, if I can walk out and, and you ask this, a same guy, my same position right now, do you remember James Carey? Yeah. He says, you know, the guy was a pretty good football player, but man, he was just a great person, man. You know, he, he loved God and he was always out to help people. That, that's all I need. Looks like he could have played with us. <laughs> <laughs> we cut from the same club. I don't think yeah, so, man. Yeah, you, you could have. Yeah, you could have. Appreciate that, Quinn. Yeah. Appreciate and it. And would have loved to have you play with us. All right, all right, all right. Back to you, folks. <laughs> <laughs> we may be looking at Governor Callier one of these days, Coach. James Callier has been the glue to this football team. For the last two years, he's got tremendous leadership abilities. He's just a great young man. We'll get his degree this year at Auburn University. And you know what was great last week in the Florida game? His father saw him play for the first time. Isn't that wonderful? Let's get back to the second half and just welcome again from the Tiger Den. And uh, coach at the halftime, 31-13. That would normally be pretty comfortable, but not with these guys. Well, I intentionally really got on to the football team at halftime, too. I kind of saw how we were kind of sitting around and, and thinking about what we are going to do after the game. And I knew what we were in for the second half. We would fortunately made some plays defensively and got them off the field. Had an 18-point lead. But that's nothing for a team that is explosive as they are. So uh, we had a little come together at, the, at halftime, but we came out and they brought it to us, and we'll see on film. We will. Big halftime show, and congratulations to Christy Burgess, a senior from Homewood, crowned Miss Homecoming. Beautiful day for a homecoming, and getting ready to have a wild second half from both teams. They start out on a bootleg passer. I thought we were going to get him for safety. Uh, he turns this play into really a great play, just an incomplete. He's supposed to have had a bad ankle, but uh, he ran around pretty good. But they drive the ball on its length of the field and scored. We knew we were in for a fight. Well, they mix the uh, draw with the good pass play on this drive. And missed tackles. We're standing around in the defensive secondary. We didn't do that last week. I, I think that we just kind of taken this for granted. We we're going to win this game, but I knew at halftime it was going to be a fight. Here comes... Uh, Cornell Williams, he's getting better on the kickoff returns also. He took Ryder Foote's place this week. And You're using him a lot more, Coach. You use him a lot more. He'll, he'll, get, he'll get a lot more playing time. And Again, they started to blitz more the second half. Here's a good throw and catch to Cassinius Moore. Good block with Lorenzo Diamond. We could score at will if we just didn't make mistakes, but here That's they go. Yeah, gave it up. And There's a big play by Mayo Sal. Almost get the interception. Just didn't go our way in this game. Here we come back with a play action. Throw it to DeAndre Green down the sideline. Uh, one thing I like about our receivers and running backs, they will not run out of bounds. They're going to make somebody pay for trying to tackle them. As you can see in the second half, we, we punish a lot of their players. Here's a good screen pass. Watch this run by Ronnie. Again, most running backs will run out of bounds. He's going to get that extra one or two yards, which makes a oh. big difference. Man. Screen passes for us played a big dividend in this game. Here's a field goal, but Damon. 37 yards. 37, about the same thing he missed with overtime, but again, he, he can't make them all. So, Two touchdown uh, lead. Here's it. They fumble the ball twice, and then we barely bump into it, and they call a penalty here. I, I disagree with that. He, you drop the ball twice as a, as a punter, you, to me, you're, you've got the opportunity to be the runner. But again, they made the call. We had to adjust. Here's a big play by Carlos Stansby in the end zone. Wow. Made the interception, and defense does it once again. Intercepted him five times on the day. And they needed every one of them. Needed every one of them all the way to the end. Here's a big play uh, by uh, Ronaldo Timmy knocking the ball out. We 
come back. Daniel sets up, throws a hard ball inside, tipped again by Marcel Willis, and they get the interception. And I tell you, that's just, you know, you got to take those chances sometimes. You just got to make the catches. Here's a big play. They ran on the draw play. Bad tackling again. We missed five tackles on that one play. Again, you do that too often, you're going to lose the game. They're within a touchdown now with 10-16 to play. 10-16, and they throw over the middle. This is a well-played ball right here. Uh, by Stanford Simmons, makes interception, runs it back. We've got a seven-point lead. Block above the waist. You can't block below the waist on a reception. Uh, they make the tackle. We come back in two plays. Watch this play. We fake the inside zone, pitch it out to Carnell, and look the speed he has. Wow. Just lowers your shoulder, gets up the middle. That's an impressive run, but this next one just as impressive on the inside zone. He's not afraid. Not coach. afraid. Watch him get his leverage. Shoulder square, down the line. Nobody's going to knock him back, fall inside for the touchdown. When a, when, a, when a great runner sees that opening, he knows, knows how to take it. Exactly right. Here they come back on a fourth and two and make the uh, interception. We had a blitz call. We've got to get inside leverage on the short post, and we didn't do it. They scored seven plays, and it's still a seven point. Look at this run. They hit him five yards in the backfield, and he still makes a three yard gain. Uh, a little face mask there, but some, for some reason, we didn't get that call in this game. Uh, coming back here. Be patient, Daniel. Don't throw the ball up for grabs. We've got a seven-point lead. Don't throw it up for grabs. But he does, and they throw the interception. They block blow the waist there. They get We get the call on it, so it, so it blank, brings them back. But again, we've got to make a play. Here, here we're in zone coverage, and uh, I don't know what Roger could was inside, but he was inside, and, and they made the touchdown. Now we get the ball back, what, less than a minute? 58 seconds. 58 seconds. What a great drive. 58 seconds. We've done this all year long. Uh, Jerris McIntyre on the reception, get the ball past the 50. Uh, we worked the cl great clock management out of uh, Noel Mazzoni. Here's a little screen, uh, swing pass to Carnell, get shoulder to square. 24, and you're going to center it up with a run. Yep, 10 seconds. We almost ran out of clock here. We centered it up, and we pulled it. Uh, but again, after it's all over with, we probably needed that because uh, pressure was getting on Damon to keep making those touchdowns. Overtime coming. Third and nine. Huge play. Biggest play probably of the, of the game. Renzo Diamond, just a clutch receiver. Watch this run by Carnell. Shoulder square. Don't go down. Keep going. Run over and punish him. Two of their players came out after that run. Uh, then we run what we call purple. Pull them off sides. Throw the fade. Great throw by uh, uh, Daniel. And excellent catch. They get their chance now. you got to hold them. Watch, we got him around the legs right here, and he throws it for grabs. And there, Don Terris Thomas intercepts. The ball game's over. And if you get the wide copy here, I would make the tackle on this because I'm chasing <laughs> as fast as they are. Get on the ground. A wild and woolly one. Auburn 48-41 in one overtime. What a win. Well, I forgot to congratulate you on getting bowl eligible and the 12-game home win streak. Well, the kids have taken pride in it, and I thought they were kind of, that's kind of hanging in the back of their mind today. Uh, that's the reason we needed to win this game, plus to get us off to a strong start on this uh, four-game stretch of conference games and three of them on the road. And it begins in Fayetteville next week. Tough place to play. We'll have our hands full, but we've got to get better on offense and defense. We've got to get some players back healthy. That, that's that been, been a problem for us, but I think after this week, uh, getting back into conference play, the guys will be a lot more energetic about getting in the training room. Okay, it'll be Auburn and Arkansas for you next week. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you then. The following is an Auburn Network production. Cobb in the shotgun, three receivers to his left. Williams is the setback. Cobb wants to pass. Going to throw the screen to Williams. Williams at the 35, 40, needs a block. 45, still on his feet. Slipping through tackles. He's at the 45, the 40, 35, 30. He's at the 25, the 20, the 15. He's at the 10. He's at the 5. Down the far sideline. Out of bounds at the 2, maybe the 3. Screen pass to Williams, and he carried the mail. That power eye set with two tight ends. Again, it's Williams. He hurdles the line. He's in. Touchdown, Auburn! He catapulted right into the end zone. And Auburn's got the lead at 23-17. At the Auburn one, the clock is running. Here's a give. It's going to be Sanks, and Sanks didn't get in. They push him back. He didn't get in, and the clock is running at seven seconds. That should do it. Can Georgia call timeout? I don't think so. Three seconds, two seconds, one second. It's over, baby. This one belongs to the Tigers. Thank you. We're landing on the line, guys. That's what it's all about. Play yes, for four sir. quarters. They got a great football team. You came on the road and beat a heck of a football team, yes, and you took it to them. We came from behind, 
and you played like the Auburn Tigers, and you brought it to them the whole four quarters. That's a four-quarter football game. Who says we can't win on the road? Yeah. Ah. It put you in a great spot. We're not done. We're going to get... We ain't even got to talk about that one. That's exactly right. We're going to get dressed. Tomorrow we're going to get healthy. We're going to think about this game for about six or seven, eight more hours. And tomorrow we go back to work. Yes, sir. Because we had unfinished business. Yes, sir. Unfinished business. Unfinished business, baby. Game ball goes to somebody set a school record 41 carries. Carnell Williams. Yeah. Reach you between the hedges here at Sanford Stadium in Athens, Georgia, where the Auburn Tigers won another thrilling game, as they all seem to be over here, 24-17. Coach, how do you explain it? What a football game! That was that was an amazing game, and as you can tell from our players in the locker room, they're excited because we'd been ridiculed a little bit about how we played on the road, and we hadn't played very well on the road, but uh, we played a good football game tonight for four quarters. Uh, it came down to the last play. Obviously, when you play Georgia, that's what always happens. But uh, I'm proud of our team. We've made some progress, and uh, I think we found us a running back. I think you did, Coach. And, and, and the thing is, it, it came down to that. You had to run the football or you were not going to win. Well, we needed to keep their offense off the field. We're still struggling a little bit defensively, and we wanted to control the football, and, and we did. We went for a couple fourth downs and, and made it and faked a punt. Uh, but they made some big plays defensively. They, they've got some weapons. They've got some speed. They've got some height at wide receiver. And I thought the difference in the game was we was able to run it a little bit better than they were. Let's go in the dressing room now and talk to some of the players. It, it was a great win for a great win on the road. But, you know, I just want to give all the praise to the Lord. Tell me about the screen pass. Oh, man, the screen pass was excellent. You know, Arkansas game, that screen pass, I kind of got caught up. But I was determined this time that I wasn't going to get caught up. And, hey, we just got body on body. We had some tough times around Auburn, you know. I mean, this just, this just really put that, you know, just do it, show how. Most supportive of Auburn is. We came out and played hard. A lot of players ded dedicated the game to me. We just went out and played hard. That's what Auburn's all about. I know you felt the love of all these guys. Yes, I really did. All the, the coaches, the team. I mean, it's the best team in the, I, mean, I ever wanted to be on. I just, I just love these guys so much, man. I just want to play hard every game. That's for your mom there, brother. I mean, we got confidence. We got faith. I mean, you know, this whole year we've been talking about faith, you know, faith in the, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And, you know what I'm saying, we had that, that faith like a must see. We came out and did it. Played great ball today, you know. Defense held a lot in the fourth quarter, what we supposed to have did. Held them on the uh, goal line. You know, just a great thing, great feeling. We got to go home, go back, get ready to play next week. It's a big game next week also. Everybody gave great effort, and I think that what we're starting to figure out now, and it's late in the season, but at least we're starting to figure it out that we can win if everyone understands that they got to keep going the whole way through. Yeah. Tonight, we, the first time in a long time, we played a whole game, yeah. whole game, four quarters. If we can do that, we will be very happy at the end of the year. This probably is your best game. Over. I, I think so. I think it is too. You know, my hats off to the offense too, because they had a lot of, you know, a lot of adversity early on, but they, they hung tough. You know, like I said, you make mistakes. Nobody's perfect. But what are you going to do after you make the mistake when you fall down? Are you going to get back up? And how fast are you going to get back up? My hats off to them. My hats off for Auburn. I think we got back to Auburn football tonight. CBS needs to endow a couple of scholarships or something after that one. That was a great, great football game. Great beginning. And what weather, as we can tell, her, great weather and a little bit of wind early in the game. A little hot for this game. Uh, it's normally a little cooler for this, this game, but uh, it was a great and perfect day for football. Let's get into the uh, first half of play. Beautiful day on one of the prettiest campuses, Coach, in the country. Great day for college football. Just a slight wind, but uh, the weather was perfect. This is the last time I remember playing in one day in Sanford Stadium. Mm. Uh, You're right. This is a, uh, this is, we got off to a bad start here. I'd say Fred Gibson, this freshman wide receiver is going to be something, a good throw and catch on the third play of the game. And we continue to get up, give up some big plays defensively, but we start to tighten up a little bit now. And uh, this is our first possession. Good uh, return here by the Columbus, Georgia native, uh, Roger Cood. You know, Carnell and Gibson may be the two candidates for Rookie of the Year. Yeah, Olympics. probably, probably will. Here's uh, one of our punts, and uh, Damon uh, 
Had a so-so night punting, but uh, good coverage right there by Tavares Robinson. But that was his last play of the game. He got a slight concussion, and doctors pulled him out for precautionary measures. Uh, here's a good tackle by Rashad Walker, who was really pumped up this week to practice, obviously playing against uh, all these Georgia guys that he played against in high school. DeMarco McNeil on a big stop. DeMarco came back and played probably one of his better games. There's good protection out of Kendall Simmons, just real good blocking up front and a good catch and by Jarius McIntyre down the left side. Nothing comes of it. Here they come. Here they come on a toss sweep and a bad pitch. We recover the fumble and it uh, gives us an opportunity now to make something happen. Carlos Rogers from Augusta, Georgia. And here's uh, one of many runs by Carnell Williams of the day. 41 oh, carries man. record uh, at Auburn University and uh, he made the most of it. Daniel Cobb sitting in the pocket, throwing against man coverage again to Jarius McIntyre. When we got him in man coverage, we pretty much had our, had our pick of receivers. Here we go now with another run by Carnell. He carried it seven out of eight times in this touchdown drive. And we'll tell you, we had great blocking in this game. It doesn't, you can't hardly tell, but by our tight ends. We went two tight ends a lot. There you can see Robert Johnson and Jay Ratliff and Lorenzo Diamond blocking up, up front along with our offensive line. Just a good day up front for our offensive linemen. Here we... Carnell has to run over Michael Owens. Michael's got to get a little bit tougher in that <laughs> hole, but uh, as you can tell here, he gets stuffed, and then Carnell just runs right up his back. And watch him stick it in the end zone right here. Oh, there it is. <laughs> big, big play, big play. Scores tied. Scores tied. They run a screen pass. Look at DeMarco McNeil. He's back. The big boy from Mobile is yeah, back. Boy, running down a back. That's running down a back. I tell you, it's, it's good to see him back. We're going to need him for the next few games, get pressure on that quarterback here. Tip pass. We knew we could get to the ball. He throws a low pass uh, when he when he does throw it on, on out him, routes. Man? And uh, here's a great pressure by Carlos Dansby. Carlos had another great game for us. Man, here's uh, you can just see defensively we weren't going to give him the run. If they were going to beat us, they were going to have to throw the ball to beat us. And here's one of our two block field goals. Don Dunn, who runs the block uh, team, uh, did a good job of scouting uh, Georgia Bulldogs and the Altamore blocked two field goals. That, uh, he would be special teams player of the week if they gave us one, I tell you. Here's another good swarm tackle by the defensive front. Uh, Dante Booker, at number 97 right there, just to see him get some play in time. James Carrier. Here's a fourth down and two. And uh, everybody on the sideline knew that it was going to run this play other than our defensive backs. And we're screaming and hollering. And, you know, that's just part of it. You have to, have to execute. You have to give it to Georgia for having the guts to call this play, that's number right. one. But uh, here we come back and and uh, we throw a fake pump and throw it to uh, uh, one of our wide receivers and we fumble the ball. Maybe the most critical part of the game here because if they get up two now, that's, uh, that's going to be... That's exactly right. Dante uh, Green's got to hold on to the football. He's fumbled a couple times this year on out routes. And now our defense is back to the wall. They run a halfback pass. And watch this play from Carlos Dan. Goes up, tips it, catches it just before he goes out of bounds. And that was a major that drive. play. Man, man. And now here we go, fourth and... And a, and a foot from about our own 13. I, I wasn't going to give our our uh, defense, put our defense back on the field after that great job of holding them. And then we run a fake punt a little later. On Damon, and eight. Damon uh, makes the fake punt. A little late hit right there. But saw one of those late in the game yeah. on us. But uh, again, we get the we get the play. Tommy, how many times has conditioning won for Auburn this year late in the game? Well, we're undermanned in some areas. And we all know that depth is a little bit better this year, but uh, Kevin Yoxel has done a superior job of getting these kids ready to play for four quarters. And as you can tell in this uh, segment, uh, he does a, a great job and the players really respect him. To excel at the game of football, it takes an athlete with speed, quickness, strength, and endurance. It's a complex recipe for success, some of which requires God-given ability, but relies just as much on good old-fashioned hard work. Much of that hard work takes place in the weight room, under the direction and supervision of strength and conditioning coach Kevin Yoxel. My philosophy with the players is that I'm not trying to, to strength and condition them to be weightlifters or bodybuilders or powerlifters. Uh, we use our strength conditioning program to be better, to become better athletes and better football players. At Auburn, there are two key elements to Coach Yoxel's program. Lifting to build strength and quickness, and conditioning to enhance endurance and prevent injuries. Now we've come around to thinking that we're trying to condition football players more for the game itself. 
and so distances are a lot shorter, movements are more specific to the position they play. And while all that's true, there is a conditioning, there is a certain aerobic conditioning component along with being a football player for things like overtime games or games when, when the defense is out there for long drives or the offense is out there for long drives. To me, it's the hardest sport to condition for because there's all these ingredients involved and at the same time, you've got to have offensive linemen weighing 280 pounds plus that can still run. And you've got to have uh, receivers now that, you know, if they weigh 140, 150 pounds, they're going to get knocked around. So they've got to be a little bit heavier, Tim Carter, for example. But you still have to maintain that speed and that agility, ability, and things like that. In the SEC, strength training is a 365-day-a-year commitment. And with that, Coach Yoxel has more day-to-day -day contact with the players than their own position coaches. I see the, the kids more than anybody does. And uh, I get to hear about all the you know, different things that go on in their lives. And I, and I actually see what they put forth as far as effort and intensity getting ready for the next season. And yeah, so we have a little bit of different relationship, I think, from the coaches. I tell the recruits when they come in that I feel like my job is the most important job on the staff. If I don't have them physically ready, and, and a big part of that is being mentally ready too, for spring ball or winter conditioning or, or even the upcoming season, and I haven't done my job. So I take it, I take it very, very seriously. Teacher, coach, and confidant, Kevin Yoxel means a lot to the Sovereign team and every player who wears the orange and blue. They were dominating it. But I thought the key to the first half, Phil, was we were able to run the ball a little bit. And we also kept the ball 20 minutes. And our defense was on the field only nine and a half minutes first half. We had a lot left over on defense the second half, and I thought that was a key. And it was important to make something happen coming out of the dressing room to start third quarter. First half, of the uh, first drive of the second half, we showed that we meant, meant business. And uh, our guys did a great job on the offensive line, and we made the plays and scored a touchdown. Let's take a look at that third quarter. I think Auburn may have the best traveling fans in college football. There's there's nothing like them. And the most faithful, they stay with us thick or thin, and that's what's been the key. There's a big throw and catch on the third down play to uh, Joe Walkins, and it looks like uh, uh, our quarterback, Daniel Cobb, is getting a little bit in a rhythm here. Another catch by Joe Walkins, starting to move the football. Give the ball to Ronnie Brown from Cartersville, Georgia. A uh, big run by him. This is the opening drive of the second half. We just drive it down and score, and I just set the tempo the entire second half. Here's a, another good throw and catch to Jarius McIntyre. If you, but if you notice, the whole key is protection. We're giving the quarterback time to throw. Now here we go. It's uh, I think it's second or third down. We sprint out. We've got this planned all along. It's just a little throw back to the tight end, and they failed to cover their tight ends and, and goal line defense, and we noticed that on film. That was good for Daniel's confidence there. Here they come down the field, and, and uh, Don A. Young from College Park, Georgia. College Park, Georgia. Good tackle by Don A. And here you're going to see another good play by Don A. Young. A young quarterback throws it up for grabs. And when you do that in this league, that's what happens. Turn the ball over, block above the waist. You can't block below the waist on on uh, interception returns, just like a punt. Now we, we get the ball. It. And uh, here's where we got a little bit upset with Daniel. The, the throw is not there to the corner. It's to the back. He's got to make that read. He failed to make the read, try to force it. And... Gets them in pretty good field position. They are deep. Yeah, they're starting at the 36 and now they're down to the 19. But we get good pressure. I thought this was one of the best series John Lovett had calling defense is this one in the last one of the game. Uh, force them to the field goal. We block it. Uh, one guy away right there. Get that guy blocked. Oh. Roger Hood goes a distance, but uh, we'll take the block field goal. Good yeah. job, Alton Moore. Here we try a field goal, and they get a little pressure from the right side. We've got to work on our field goal protection. and uh, Just not a very good kick by, by Damon. Mm -hmm. Now we get the ball back, put Jason Campbell in the game, run a few plays with him, quarterback draw. We work down and get an opportunity to kick a field goal. And uh, Damon gets it lined up pretty well. Get good, better protection this time and kick it, and we go up 17-14. Ball game's a little bit better in control here. We feel like uh, we're fourth getting a little bit now. more consistent. Fourth quarter, uh, look at that play right there by Alton Moore. And... Uh, DeMarco McNeil, I tell you, we played the run real well in this game. We're getting better. Auburn uh, makes a couple first downs, but uh, George is back on offense. Four-man rush. Uh, they turn uh, Roger Cood around a little bit right there. We're in uh, a little bit of a man coverage, and I tell you, they run good routes, and we've got to do a better job of covering them. Here comes a rush. Here comes a rush. We've got a blitz on from the backside. Alton Moore gets the sack along with Spencer Johnson. Here they try one of their field goals. They 
first time they don't get one block, and they tie it 17-17. Now it's Cadillac time. Oh, yes. Call number 24 number, and he steps to the top. I want you to watch these next few plays. i tell you what, he refuses to come down, but again, it all starts with protection. Here's a little screen pass we've been working on. We've got to block a little bit better, but I tell you, just keep watching 24 in a pile because sometimes he'll come popping out. Here he comes. Here's Jarius McIntyre. If he just cuts number two instead of blocks him high, it's a touchdown, but we'll take it. That's right, because number uh, 24. 20, 20, 24 still had enough to get air, boy. Go over the top and uh, big play. We're getting better down inside the goal line. Good for good and good blocking up front. Now we come back. We got a blitz on. We force uh, their freshman quarterback to throw the ball a little bit quicker than he than he would like. Uh, as you can tell here, he's not real comfortable in the pocket. We're getting a little bit more pressure. There's uh, Tavares Pounds, another Georgia native. Try to make a first down good. here, and then the game would be over. First down. Get it. Get one first down. The ball game's over. Cadillac on seven yards on first down. We don't make it. They get the ball back, uh, make a couple of plays after a late hit penalty. They throw the ball on a corner route. Donna Young's got to play a little bit tighter. 16 seconds. They don't have any timeout. They line up in an unbalanced set. We've worked on this all week long, and it worked out perfect. Now just lay on top of it. It takes 12 seconds to spot a ball after the whistle is blown and the ball game is over. So no I'm sure that they learned Georgia. a little bit of a lesson from that. Mark is going to be a heck of a football coach at Georgia. But that's just one mistake, you know, you just can't make it. Tommy, it's, it's mind-boggling. Auburn has come here and won nine out of ten games over the years. We have a lot of players from the state of Georgia on our football team. They bring a lot of emotion, and emotion wins football games, and uh, we came over and won another one tonight. And speaking of emotion... <laughs> Next week will be a, a very tough game for us. Uh, you know, we can throw out all about the Western Division and bowl games and all that. This is for the state championship. We're looking forward to it. We have it uh, in Auburn, and... Uh, they had, a, they had a big win, and so it'll be a great football game. Indeed it will, and we will have the replay for you here on the Auburn Football Review. Thank you for being with us. See you next week.